If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Always, always a pleasure hanging out with our good friend who can't seem to keep his pants on when he sees us. No. It's, he, I think he gets so excited that he just mm, wants to be naked. Maybe and he gets sweaty down there. Like I don't, it's like a swamp. I don't know, but I, I appreciate it. He's got he's got an amazing body, so I don't have any problems with it. <laughs> yeah, just uh, let it out, buddy. But he loves to just get naked, and he did with that. With his rainbow uh, did you Did you miss that? right in the pool. Did you miss that? I, mean, I didn't Sal see. Did, did, he, did he get oh, in the pool naked? Corner oh, so of my eye, I saw When it. we were getting ready for the podcast right now, he we were getting all set up, and he'd come up to me, and he says, uh, can I get a towel real quick? I'm going to jump in the pool. And I said, sure, okay. And uh, Justin is sitting with, uh, Justin seeing the, can see the pool. The back, is, the, my back is yeah. the pool. And Justin goes like, oh, this motherfucker just got naked yeah. and is swimming in our pool right now. <laughs> There's a naked man in our pool. Totally naked? <laughs> totally naked. God, he's, Hundo. So, he's so comfortable he's so with himself. Free. Yeah. Did you see what he did at the, at the, at the, uh, the convention to me? No. We're all hanging out talking, <laughs> and he leaves, and he does a fucking ball tap. Oh, hits yeah. me right in the <laughs> right in the pills <laughs> and just kind of laughs and stuff and I'm like that was the strange goodbye damn I mentioned. bro yeah. I love Kyle damn, he's I, a great guy big hellos and strange always goodbyes happens. he's a great father great husband great friend he's a good guy good yeah. human being good human yeah. being one good, of our favorite great yes dude. he is a good dude and we always have a great conversation with him we never know where it's gonna go we never yeah. discuss what topics we're gonna ayahuasca address. will come up it's <laughs> given yes it is and I do I but do, that was brief I, I you know, I give him a lot of credit. It was. I, I always kind of eye roll a little bit when we start there. I, I don't know if that's just a. It's, it's a, comp- a cool topic. I don't it's mind. Not, it's, He's yeah, passionate no, that's why about you it. don't mind talking that He's way. I'm like whatever about it. About it. I'm I'm yeah. over the conversation. We've had it so much, but I know that's a common ground and an interest that I think we shared in the last couple of years, and so it's a common discussion. Um, but I do like that we 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 hit it, we move on from it, and then we talk about a lot of other really good stuff. Yeah, in this it's episode, a good conversation. It's always a good podcast when we have Kyle uh, Kingsbury as a guest. Um, and uh, I mean, that was from day one when we first met him. So one of yeah. our favorite people in the world. Um, also, look, this month we are giving away two nutrition type guides for free. We have the new Intuitive Nutrition Guide, and we have the Intermittent Fasting Guide. Both you can get for free if you enroll in any MAPS bundle. Now, bundles are where we take multiple MAPS programs, put them together, and discount them. You can find these programs and more at mindpumpmedia.com. Now, without any further ado, here we are interviewing the Director of Human Optimization from Onnit, Kyle Kingsbury. He's also the host of the Onnit podcast. Enjoy. Bro, that's the shirt. That's the shirt right there. How long have you had that shirt? You wore yeah, that man. the first. Did, that was, was that the first time. Yeah, that was the first time you hung out with so us. I think tank. you wore that. You, I, I think you might even came into Mind Pump Media in that unicorn shirt. No shit. I believe, yeah, dude. I believe. I feel so. it's like a, I feel it's like a test that you do with people when you first meet them. It's like if these motherfuckers are cool, <laughs> What's the reaction? They're yeah. gonna like that I'm barefoot and I have a unicorn on my shirt. I get more. I right? get more compliments like, about this it. shirt. I have the same sweater. The hoodie. That's that's oh, I remember that one. Yeah. And the hoodie. That one's yeah, awesome. That, that fucking they crush, man. So people it, like that shit. So I found, yeah, show them the picture. We so met another guy I, with a so I badass found, shirt. I found this guy right, like this dinosaur fucking shirt, and he had this <laughs> he had this fucking rad cowboy hat on. And so I traded him a bottle of wine for his cowboy hat, and I took his cowboy hat the rest of the trip. But that's I, dope. Yeah, yeah. No, I was like, look at this shirt. It's so rad. But it reminded me of your shirt. Sure. Yeah, dude. <laughs> that's true. So you, what, I see you have. Is that a glucose monitor on your arm? Yeah, it's a CGM. Bro, how long you had it? No, just yesterday. Oh, my sh- wife got one. So this is a legit. This is the legit like medical the one. It is, it is a legit. It's implanted in there. I okay. can. I feel it. Um, like when I get an overhead or if I'm driving. Okay. It's starting. To, it's starting to go away. The, the feeling of it, of actually wearing it. Uh huh. But um, how long do you keep that on, or do you have to change the this, adhesive? This will run; it'll stay on me for two weeks, then I mail it back. So, unfortunately, mm. like I was telling Justin earlier, I don't get shit in real time, and that's mm. really the benefit of having that is yeah. that you can look on your phone or whatever device and yeah. see exactly what's going on while it's going on. So, how come you didn't get the real time one? They well, they have it; it is real time, but they wouldn't give me the fucking little. He's like a beta that, tester, right? Yeah, the, the so. one that goes with it, exactly. Oh, interesting. So I think they, they're they trying to get as much data collected on this as they can. So sure. they hooked up a bunch of people that are influencers, 
And uh, interesting. We'll see. They want you to food log and do all. I was this just shit. gonna say you yeah, probably man. have to keep a bunch of. I fucking haven't done that in like six goddamn <laughs> years. So I'm like, he's well, like, what? Adam's wheelhouse. I think I'm just gonna. Work? I'm just gonna. I'm gonna just, cheat. I'm just gonna <laughs> cap. <laughs> yeah. he's gonna be- I'm gonna cap the day. Like, hey, I drank this night. It was Paleo FX weekend, <laughs> and then I danced. So maybe there was some. Maybe that's the yo-yo <laughs> effect of my blood sugar stuff, <laughs> right? And then, uh, yeah, no, no, all the drugs. <laughs> I don't know. That would be a fucking just as cool to see because they're like, you know, put, don't that eat be super cool clean. Yeah. You know, they want you to kind of they want to see play, what the reactions have are. some cheat meals. Yeah. yeah. See what the fluctuations are. And uh, it would be very interesting to see how chemicals interact with blood sugar. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I think um, depending on the chemical, I know certain certain substances will probably lower. I, I believe nitric oxide uh, type boosters like uh, like Viagra and stuff like that will definitely I believe we'll lower. And glucose you know this because I fucking dropped in. It, it was the first time my wife and I had ever done Viagra together. So what's that like, dude? With the co- wow. so, so, I, so Viagra increases blood flow for both men and women. A lot of people don't know this, but women also get kind of like an erection, like a man would. It just happens to her, you know, whatever the her her clitoris. Vulva. Well, her the clitoris whole above, vulva yeah, swells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's supposed to increase wow. that, you know, that blood flow. But did, did she notice anything from it? Earn pleasure. Yeah, you know, it's it's. I mean, with, I'll just put it on the wall there. We, I wouldn't call it candy flipping because that's where you take them at similar times with LSD and Molly. Mm. We had LSD to start the night and then we had some Molly later on in the night with 2CB. 2CB is one of the alpha beta means that uh, Sasha Shulgin created. Okay. And it doesn't give you the push towards love the way MDMA is, but it, but it's, they're similarly constructed. Interesting. It's a phenyl group instead of a methyl group. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> it was our, our first time running those things together and certainly our first time with viagra but and so it takes it takes longer to to come to climax for men and women in that situation but you have a desire to work towards it and that's exactly what shulgin says in his book on it i think it's pcal phenyl I, i'm gonna get i'm gonna fuck this up phenylalanine phen, phen, phenyl alanines i don't know yeah. if there's fucking druggies out there that are geeking <laughs> out on this video, you fucked it up yeah. it's it's He's something I've known and loved. And uh, it's, it's, it's all these amazing chemicals that he's created. But he, I think he created this in the 80s, like 1982 or 85. Interesting. And he said if, they, if the pharmaceutical industry ever comes up with an aphrodisiac that's prescription, it'll be based on this. Just less psychedelic. So it has aphrodisiac properties because I know, uh, you know when, you, when you read the literature on, on substances like MDMA, it's not – it's not tr- like statistically or, or consistently an aphrodisiac. It's more of a like letting break in on the walls and people mm-hmm. love each other and all that stuff. And they've never really identified a, like a real aphrodisiac for everybody. And this one you, you're saying. That's what all the trip reports have been on it. You know, I haven't taken it. This is only the second time I've had it. So I, I don't really know mm-hmm. is there like from a, an N equals one standpoint how that looks, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. but it's certainly, it was fucking awesome. Man. We, had, <laughs> we, we had amazing, amazing sex and uh, I'm happy she was able to get there a couple of times, which is the goal of any session. So <laughs> is, is, is there like a forum of like people that you talk to about all this? Yeah, man. Uh, There's a lot online. Arrowid.org is one of the first like drug databases that I ever got a hold of. And it's, there's a ton of knowledge there. They have, Everything from chemical structure to legality based oh, on wow. where you are to trip reports. And the trip reports are people's are really experiences, cool. yeah. right? And yes. and the people that write there, they're all fucking down. Like they're all trying to do the work. They're not just like, yeah, I fucking I mean Got they have, they have meth reports. I mean, there's every drug known to man included there. So you can see like a meth trip report, what mm. that looks like. Hmm. But um for the most part, when it comes to the psychedelics and things like that, it's people saying this is what my, they have a scale. So like, this was my CEV closed eyed visual scale. This was my open eyed visual scale. This is my feelings, you know, and they just fucking go through every possible experience you could have on it, but it's very detailed. So you get a really, I love, I, cool man, I, I love, I love technology, the current state mm-hmm. of it, because it's funny with more information, it, it, people have treated these things. So and I'm not like necessarily an advocate or not. I'm an advocate for people doing whatever the fuck they want to themselves. You're a fucking advocate. Yeah, well, I'm an advocate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Do what you, it's, you're, you know, I'm an advocate for people being able to do what you're they want with their body. Freedom. You own your body. But my point is, 
you know, I love that the in the past, more information they tried to they would try to clamp down on it or prevent it from happening because they think it would encourage, right. mm-hmm. you know, dangerous behavior. But the the irony well, is only the opposite. Help people the more they know. The opposite is true. You're actually getting people who are doing more responsible use, mm-hmm. and you you hear more of that now. Whereas in the past, you'd be like, oh, I did all this. Now you're like, no, 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 don't take that much of this and or do it this way, and because they're educating themselves. Yeah, I mean, I, well, we have we generally do things. Um, I mean, we're not afraid to go down the rabbit hole with substances we're familiar with, like psilocybin and things like sure. that. You know, like we'll, we'll we'll do the heroic dose of those things at home where it's controlled environment, set and setting. Yeah, out in public, different different scenario. Mm-hmm. You know, so we 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 truly did limp in with all the substances. We took a small amount of each. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe not with the LSD, but definitely a small amount of each. And, and then that was that was cool. I mean, it was a beautiful experience, top to bottom. You know, so is that a, is that a, a thriving culture in in this town? Because I feel like it. I don't know if it's just because we're, we're we're hanging out with, you know, we meet with you and stuff like that. And so yeah, that's, that's I don't it. know if it's game recognized game or if it's just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like I, I don't know if like if it's, it's it could be like attracts like, and I meet these people, yeah. you know, and certainly mm-hmm. being a part of the onic culture and with Aubrey. Mm-hmm. You know, we we get to see a bit more of that. Mm-hmm. And I've mm-hmm. I've met you know quite a few awesome, interesting people at uh, the Rick Doblin fundraiser mm-hmm. they did maps mm-hmm. did for PTSD at Aubrey's house. But um, yeah, man, it's, who, it's who a do cool you, deal. Who would, uh, you've interviewed a lot of great minds in in that arena? Like, who do you who's like a go to person that you would recommend if someone's listening to you right right now and they're kind of like, oh, I want to hear more science or information right. on this well, I would, I would, McKenna just the, Dennis the Dennis, Dennis, Dennis I'm Terrence sorry. is dead yeah. he's right. still dead okay yeah. <laughs> he's still, yeah. dead. still dead man <laughs> <laughs> he's still dead damn it Dennis is fucking amazing man I mean I, I, a great place to dive in if you got three hours to listen to Dennis McKenna on Joe Rogan mm-hmm. and he really gives a great and you know a lot of the science but even more of that is just the the respect he has for ayahuasca he's done it over a hundred times and mm-hmm. he says he still feels like a baby Every time he does it. Mm-hmm. And that's something I, I love when there's that level of familiarity, but still that level of respect for what mm-hmm. you're doing. Mm-hmm. Because it does take, like, you have to have a fucking level of respect yeah, for yeah. what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Have you seen, because you're in this world and you're <clears throat> you're probably viewed, obviously, because your position as a bit of an authority on this on subjects like this and others. Have you seen people go down the, the, the road of, like, abuse? Or have you seen anybody who's like, okay, you need to not... Yeah. Do this like yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. Cause yeah. I'll- no. No. Yeah. We have to. We have to play both sides carefully. And that you know, the truth is, there's there's quite a few people that I've seen, even in ayahuasca circles, where you, where it's not easy. It's not like I'm gonna fucking take LSD too often, which mm-hmm. is super common. That's an easy one. Really? Yeah, it's fucking euphoric. Yeah. There's not a lot of work. You're like, yeah, you know, Jim Fadiman talks about you know every fourth day. Psychedelic Explorer's Guide is an excellent uh, resource for that. Because it takes your, your body time to clear, mm. right? So mm. if you do it more often than every fourth day, which is still fairly... That's it's fucking, a lot. Still. That's <laughs> dropping in often, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you were to do it uh, faster than that, your body downregulates it very quickly. So then, you know, one hit, you need two hits to get to one. Sure, hit, sure, and sure. So on and so forth. But with when it comes to... Um, when it comes to ayahuasca in particular, I've seen people show up that they do the same it looks like they're in the same fucking spot mentally and emotionally mm, every right. time i see are them are they like just trying to escape well they're not they're not doing the work like you can get the fucking message but if you don't take that from the ethereal spiritual place or whatever the fuck that is mm-hmm. and ground that into reality by actually doing the homework you, there's not much gained from it mm-hmm. and doing the and, by doing the homework you mean like okay i got this Whatever the message is, yeah, I'll, right. I got, I'll explain that. I got so an I, experience. I had done it three three months in a row, um, just a single ceremony, but three months in a row, and uh, every month for three months, and and the second time and the third time in a row, I kept getting the same. I kept being told the same thing, and it was to meditate and do yoga, and I was like, "Why are you fucking telling me this again?" And the answer was, "You haven't started meditation or yoga. That's why. Right. Like those were my." Then that's, you know, it's kind of like, um, what is it? The Oracle in, uh, the matrix. Yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. like it's, it's not the message for everyone. That's the message for you and you mm-hmm, alone. Mm-hmm. Right. And so a lot of people get up and share with the group at the end and closing circle. And they'll say, we need to stop using paper. We need to stop, stop wiping our ass with toilet. Like, we were going through to me and then they'll be corrected <laughs> and say, I, 
I need this, right? Because it's that's the message for you. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like yeah, people yeah. try to extrapolate everything out that they're given to this is what the <laughs> like world they, needs. <laughs> and it's like, nobody, that's the message you, know you what? got. That's nobody profound. else got that. That's yeah. actually profound. I, I think a lot of people don't realize because you, you, you'll feel you know moved by something or you want to make a difference. And, and the first place a lot of people go is, I'm going to make this grand thing, you know, change for everybody. Everybody needs to do this thing. Mm-hmm. But the but the the change always starts with within with yourself. Yeah. In fact, that's the only thing you really have a lot of control over. And if everybody did that, we'd have what we wanted. Mm-hmm. If we just all focused on that, you know, that that sovereignty of ourselves. And that's the contribution, you know? Like whatever what if the if the goal is to change the world, it always starts with you. But but it doesn't have to be like even among for a long time, I wanted my sister and different family members to do ayahuasca. And it was like, no, man, everyone walks their own walk. Mm-hmm. I had a shaman tell me this in Colombia. Everyone gets to walk their own path. And the work is for you to do and for you alone. Mm-hmm. And how I change and and open my heart and give more love and share more knowledge, that's the gift I give to them. It's not having them fucking go to the Amazon with me. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Now, do you believe, because I know like some some shaman will say this too, that it's not necessary to do some of the ayahuasca or drugs to get there and that some people have the capabilities to actually get that deep into meditation that they can receive these types of messages or get the same thing from it. So there's, 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 there's a, I have a couple, a couple thoughts on that. One, there's no way there's the, ayahuasca is in a league of its own. It's like, you can fucking, right, cause meditate. you're chemically you doing do breath work. Right? You can fucking do all the shit and you can, you can have visuals, you can have visions. I mean, I, I was in Sedona at spirit ranch doing shamanjelic breath work, similar to holotropic breath work mm-hmm. by Stanislav Grav. And I was, a, I had fucking full blown visions, just like I was using substances with no substance. No. It was powerful. So you can get there. There's no doubt about that. And I think people that have been meditating <clears throat> consistently daily, for you know decades on end there's no doubt they're tapping in but it's it's a totally different experience and it's mm. and it's always funny i mean paul check said this he's like it's it's a comical when people are are airy fairy about their own path you know many all many paths lead up the mountain right so if anybody is telling you this is the way you don't need that other sure, shit. It's sure, like, sure. man, that's because you haven't fucking had that right, it's right, not right. you know it's not for everyone right, i'm not right. trying to say that but at the same time it's a whole different fucking animal. Yeah, I think it's like anything, you know? Everybody's so it's individual. It's like the face of the mountain instead of the long road, right? <laughs> That's what I feel like. I feel like there's lots of ways to get up the mountain and you Let can take, take the, the fucking you can take gondola. The gondola. Or you can right. take the gondola yeah, straight it, to it the top. It reminds me of being on the, right, the skis on the way up, dude. And you're like, there's the face of the mountain oh, right shit. there, right? It's like, I got to do all those moguls <laughs> We're going straight up. Yeah. Yeah. Someone turned it up too fast. Ah. Yeah. That's crazy, man. So do you, uh, do you ever wear shoes? <laughs> I, wear, I wear shoes every now and then. I actually wore shoes here. I just took them off. Yeah, you I did. Because I, I saw you at Paleo, and I'm, you're just straight up yeah. just walking around barefoot. Yeah, man. I'm walking the walk. Well, that's one of the you few know? places you gotta, that you could be at a, a public like that, and they well, probably yeah. totally I, accept it. I can get away that, with yeah. it at Whole Foods here, too. I, oh, I, I really? tried to test the water, and they were fucking cool with it. And my son walks around barefoot everywhere, too, so that was that was sweet. Yeah, it's like a progression. Because I, I don't do. Were you always? Have you been doing that for a long time? Prob- I think more so since I got to on it because it's my first real job, and then it's also at the same time like you're cool with it's cool totally fucking chill. It's the I don't have to wear a it. fucking outfit, you yeah. know? Like why would I wear? And that's the other thing at Paleo FX and also at at work at on it. It's all concrete slabs indoors. Mm-hmm. You're still grounding on concrete. Yeah, 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 you know, like if it was asphalt, you're not grounding. It's kind of no point, mm-hmm. you know. But mm-hmm. I mean on. On concrete, you're still grounding, and you're not. It's not the same as being in the fucking ocean, where it's actually going to shift quite a bit. Like that's why we feel the way we do yeah, yeah, yeah. when we're in the water. And I certainly miss that about NorCal, but um, it does mitigate a lot of the EMF and, and fucking well, Wi-Fi and all the shit buzzing around at the office. Well, you'd sure. be the guy to ask because you you do all these things and you test them out on yourself. And I mean, have you noticed that when you go barefoot all the time? What do you notice? Mm-hmm. I. I mean, there's a couple things. One, you're more mindful of where you fucking step. So you can't just float through space. I mean, and, and sometimes I walk, we live close That's enough to- That's a good to, point. We live close enough to uh, on it where I can walk home a lot of times and I'll do walking meditation or I'll throw in Audible and listen to a book on the walk home because I, I no longer have a commute. Mm-hmm. And I used to love that about the Bay Area. People, are, people hate their fucking, their commute. But Aubrey talked about this in his book on the day, um, mindfulness or mindfulness while you're driving Mm because that could be that's for a lot of people their worst time of the day is the fucking morning and evening commute right so mindfulness would be practicing meditation while you're driving 
and not, you know, throw on easy listening instrumental music where you're not taking in or receiving fucking lyrics and things like that and just drop into your mindfulness practice while you're driving or mindfulness. You throw on audible, you throw on a fucking enlightening podcast and you get some information Mm -hmm, in that mm -hmm. time. Right. So because we're so close, it's a, I mean, my wife will drop me off with bear and that's like a 10 minute drive tops, but getting to walk home, that's a nice 45 minute slow walk and I'll walk barefoot and there's fucking gravel and I have to be mindful of poison Ivy. I mean, it's, it's not easy on my feet. And that's also something that's, that's incredibly drawing into the present. Mm-hmm. Like you, I fucking look at every fucking step I take, you know, I can't just, that's a very interesting through. point. You know, I mean, think mm-hmm. of that. It's like you're, you're, you're disconnected completely when you walk, walk around with shoes all the time. So you don't even, you're just walking around on, on, on numb. Yeah, you, can, you can walk on a pebble and it doesn't hurt whatsoever right. in yeah. your sneakers. You, know, you, you know? feel it in sneakers. It's a lot yeah. more information you know, you're receiving too mm-hmm. through your feet and your toes and everything else. <laughs> ever since every we, contact Ever point. since we met Brink, I, just, I started to really pay attention to people's function with their feet. And you have incredible function with your feet. I mean, you, you don't have, your feet aren't flat. You don't pronate, supinate. Everything seems pretty connected. And I would assume it's probably part yeah, of the How's that help your squats and, you know, like it, from that perspective? I mean, it, it, everything's improved, De- especially deadlifts. Squats have improved just from the technique of squatting better, but deadlifting for sure because mm-hmm. I know how to grip the ground with my feet now. Yeah. You know, and that's a big mm-hmm. one for any type of hitch, hip hinge movement. You know, those are things that, that really have carryover very quickly. Mm-hmm. But especially with running, like my gait, uh, I, t- I think I mentioned this probably on w- one of the podcasts we've done, but when I ran the 50K, at 238 pounds with zero fucking injuries. That's for sure a credit to having been in five finger shoes and being barefoot often. Yeah, I would, of course. That's a, I mean, that's a big dude to be running that much. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. How, how is your training now? What, what does your workouts look like now? Because you look, uh, you're, always, you're always in good yeah. shape. Uh, you're pretty lean right now. You're a little now. bigger than last. Yeah, are you little, are you are, are you are you are you on gear now or something or are you just lifting more? <laughs> I'm like, all gassed up, brother. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Well, it's funny, you know, um, something you guys had mentioned was, you know, the bounce back that you get after uh, a fast. Yeah. So mm. I had just done a five day water fast in Sedona when I finished it with some substances, but uh, <laughs> the. I, I was 222 when I went into the fast, and I like being around 220. I feel like that's the that's happy medium where I'm I'm strongest, but I'm also the most limber and mobile, and it translates well on the mats. Mm-hmm. I don't like being a, a you know over 225. And what's crazy is after the fast, because everybody's like, "How much muscle did you lose? How much strength did you lose?" And you're like, "Bitch, the, all that shit comes back so quick." And, and then right? some. And then yeah. some. So I'm fuck. I gained eight fucking pounds. After the fast, I was so hungry and still eating keto the whole way and gained eight pounds. That's what I've been telling these guys. It's crazy. So I've put on about maybe eight pounds of lean body mass. Now, I did change my workout, but I also started fasting for about 48 to 72 hours every month. So at the beginning of every month, I start off that way. And it wasn't for muscle gain. It wasn't for fat loss. I did it for – I was doing it for gut health. And then after the first or second time, I'm like, oh, shit, I like the – I like the spiritual effects of it, of it, and the fact that I, I I can disconnect from food from a few day for a few days, and I really get just good spiritual and mental work from it. Yeah, a ton of downloads. But then the side effect of it, which was tripping me out, is is it, maybe because my gut is so much healthier, so I'm just assimilating food better. But I'm just I'm just building muscle to like me, I, like ten years ma- ago. To me, it makes the most sense like that. It seems like that you're you're wringing your system out, right? You're like kind of like a sponge squeezing everything out because you're fast, and everything gets sucked out of your system, and then it's just primed. To absorb, yes. p- absorb everything properly. And it's we, it's no different we, than taking a day off working out or something. Right, right. And we live we live in this like oversaturated society, right? We're constantly feeding our faces. We never take more than what five hours mm-hmm, from a mm-hmm. break from the next meal. So it's like you can't tell me that we haven't desensitized our entire body and our receptors. Dude, that'll piss off a lot of people fast for muscle gain. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that goes against the grain. It does right. for sure. But uh, on that note, I don't train nearly as often as I used to. I kind of fucked my knee up the last time I, I did jiu-jitsu hard. I may end up having to take a look with an MRI. Oh, mm. shit. It's fucking, what happened? Did you get a heel hook? Or? N- well, similar. It's, it's, it, was a, it was a knee bar that was off to the side. Oh. And so, and I can't even do it on the leg, my left knee where it's fucked up. You feel but like I your mean, medial li- ligament yeah, might have torn? All that through there. It didn't, it didn't pop or anything like that. And it, the thing is, jiu-jitsu is so humbling regardless but the fact that i tried to fight that position that was where i look back on that like 
Why do you think you tried That's to fight fucking, it? Was it a lower ranked person? He's a, much smaller than me, and uh, it didn't and it didn't hurt. So I didn't want to give him the tap. Whereas if I ever get put in that position again, it's like a heel hook. You should tap. Yeah, when the they have the position, it's yeah. there. Yeah, dude, you got it. Don't tap. Yeah. Let's go back to the next thing. I'll get you next time. That kind of thing. And and so the fact that I fought it for so long, I still finished rolling. The, that happened early on, you know, and uh, and I still finished the whole practice and felt fine. And then later that night, like it was hard to walk. And then for a month, it was hard to walk. Yeah, wow. And then it finally got better. And I was doing yoga with my wife at home and it fucking popped twice in like the most candy ass yoga class. Oh shit. And it was brutal, man. So now I'm just like, well, maybe I take a look at it later. I don't know, but I'm going to, I'm going to nurse this thing and just give it time and I can still hinge and work with kettlebells. So I'm doing a lot of stuff. You're going to use some, uh, some peptides or anything. I'm that? thinking BPC one five seven. So, yeah. so I know nothing about this except for what Ben Greenfield was telling me about Greenfield it. Greenfield did an amazing write up on it. And, um, Sounds like a cool robot. BP seven, BP four five seven, BPC. Yeah, uh, that and TB five hundred are really good. At <laughs> That's another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, they're, they're really good at healing injuries. And it, I'm, I'm not too familiar with TB five hundred, but BPC one five seven is the same um, amino acid structure as gastric juice in the gut. Isn't that the one where they did the studies with the rats and they gave it to them and it cured their they would their fucking, Crohn's or they whatever? Would do fucked up shit. Yeah, it, it's, it's amazing for gut health, heals the intestinal lining. But they would sever the Achilles on a fucking rat and see how fast it took to reconnect and wow. regrow. Oh, wow. And so with BBC one five seven, you can use it locally right there at the source, or you can go subcutaneous and, and systemic. And they saw like really rapid healing. So it's one of the things where it upregulates uh, collagen uptake, mm-hmm. and then that can help repair tendon and ligament damage. Now, is this quickly. is this gray market, black market? What is it? It's gray market. You know, these things are they're peptides or things that you'd order online that are not for human consumption, for mm-hmm. research purposes mm-hmm. only. You know, like if you actually had like everyone ordering this shit has rats at their house, they're gonna fucking experiment. <laughs> you know what's funny? You know what's funny you say that? So yeah. after meeting with Ben, I did a little bit of research, just a tiny bit, so I don't know a whole lot, but I would read these forums and when people ask questions about it, they don't they talk about it as if they have a rat. Uh-huh. It's like so. My rat pulled his Achilles. My, my rat hurt his <laughs> my rat. Yeah. meniscus. What do you think I should do? And I'm like, oh, you fuckers, you guys are full, full of shit. Yeah. yeah. I had I had run BBC one five seven before from a, a adductor pull, and it worked really well. So I'm hoping it helps with the knee. But and would you just go straight local where where you feel it? Is it intramuscular? Where, if you're doing it local, or how I does mean, that- fuck, dude, I'm I'm nervous about putting anything in my knee. You know, with an even insulin pin or not, you know, so I might just go sub Q in the knee. I might just go in the gut. We'll see. Mm. We'll see. Interesting. How, how hard does it get to get a hold of that stuff? Online, dude. It's a yeah, research you chemical. Yeah, fucking, Do mean, you have to reconstitute it and all that shit? Yeah, you got to reconstitute it. So what does it come as powder? Yeah, lyphalized lif- lif- powder. So it comes as powder, and then you buy the the bac- bacteria, what is it called? So it's water? like, it's like mixing water. HCG yeah. or Back HGH, water. real similar. And Very similar. T- and you take it with insulin pins, same way. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. So oh, that's a trip, man. Just like that. Well, shit, hopefully it works. You know, it's funny. You were talking about jujitsu. We were just commenting on this. So we went to Big Tech's gym. Have you ever been there? Here, okay, so uh, our, 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 our good buddy, Ben Pollock, works out there. And we walk in, and it's like... It's like old school, yeah. like Iron Dungeon. It's like put, it, put up or shut up. Like you go in there and gym, just like, yeah. are you, cause like we were hung over. The night before, everybody gone out and drank. We walk in, we're like, we're not working out. We're just going to film some stuff with Ben. And we all ended up working out because of the vibe in there. But the, the thing that I was commenting on it, in fact, I had a conversation with Adam about this. You know, we've been in gyms forever. And you go into these like big corporate gyms or these bodybuilder gyms. And there's an interesting vibe. Like, you know, people are kind of like, you know, trying to show off or you, nobody's really cool or whatever. It's kind of intimidating, especially if you don't work out. You, you guys know, are three inches in front of the mirror doing yeah. curls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like, you know, like, yeah. like if you're a new person, you would definitely not feel welcome, right? Mm. This place, Iron Dungeon, chalk, rust on some of the, the plates, fucking death metal playing. Right. And everybody's Old like machines. super cool, super – like if you were a beginner and you walked in there, I get, you'd have like – Top level power lifters and strength athletes helping you out. You know, it's like super cool environment. We we're talking about this. I'm like, you know, it's funny that there's this interesting, um, you know, stereotype where those are the intimidating gyms, right? But the reality is, those are the ones where you'll get the most help and everybody's gonna be the most. Oh, cool. the big gorillas are the nicest. Man. The nicest, and and you know, we were speculating. I'm like, you know what it is? I'm like, it's because you get your ego checked in a gym like this a lot. Like you walk into a bodybuilder gym, 
And, you know, you're not going to get buried under a squat. You're not well, doing... You walk into a bodybuilder gym, it's subjective. Yeah. It's about look. Yep, yep, you know what I'm yep. It's like, you know, my biceps look bigger than yours and my chest look... And right. And there's no... There, we could debate it back and forth on who looks better. So like that. Right. And so jiu-jitsu is like Your that. symmetry's off, bro. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> right, right. But I was telling him, jiu-jitsu is kind of like that. Like, if you go into jiu-jitsu school and you've got a big old ego and you think you're a badass... You're going to get humbled. Everybody gets humbled in jiu-jitsu. So everybody seems to be super chill and cool. And a lot of times you get humbled by a guy smaller than you, which is very humbling, you know? 100%. It's, it's that, whole, that whole vibe of, you know, where you go in. And, and I think that's probably one of the biggest things I, 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 I learned from jiu-jitsu. And it's just, what, what, what is your, you still train quite a bit. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, I, I competed. Um, it was a solo match. Uh, Wait, recently? Eight, eight minute rounds. No, or eight, it was at one eight minute round submission only at the Honored Invitational Seven last November. Oh, okay. And I wasn't in shape for that. I was traveling. I went on a, uh, an elk hunt right in the last week of my hard training. <clears throat> so, and I wasn't getting hard training on the elk hunt. Yeah. You know, I was putting in mileage, but it's not the same. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. and uh, showed up for that, and I lost really due to cardio. So I was like, all right, fuck man. That's the, that's the, <laughs> that's the last time I will ever lose because of cardio. Yeah. If I choose to compete, you know, I have this idea that when I retired from fighting, I don't like doing high intensity intervals. I don't like training in that way, but it's like, if I'm going to fucking compete again, whether there's money on the line yeah. or not, it doesn't matter if I'm not getting paid to do it. Right. I need to show up. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a competitor. And, yeah. Yeah. If I'm going to compete. And so, you know, I had some time off, after that match and then was getting back into it. And we actually had Rob Wilson out from Art of Breath. Mm. They did an Art of Breath seminar at On It. And it was fucking amazing. And I just felt so good. And he's getting into jiu-jitsu with Brian McKenzie. So we jumped in class together and this was the day I got hurt. But in that day, I felt so much better. I felt like my cardio was better than when I had competed. And it had been four months since I had put in a full practice. And what was that like, from? The breath stuff that he was teaching? Yeah, the breast stuff, but also having put in more high intensity intervals in between yeah, that, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I truly enjoy jujitsu. It's something it'll be a, it'll be a lifelong practice, and I want my children to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you feel like it gives you? It's one of those things where, and I was I was speaking on a, a panel which <laughs> I didn't really want to be on. It was the death of the American male, and there was three women and three guys, and I was like, this oh, could God. be. And they put you on there. <laughs> All bad, yeah, dude. Yeah. And it turned out to be actually you're the perfect. What damn, I wish I really was. You're that. the perfect person. Uh, it was it was beautiful, but uh, and, you know, Aubrey hit me up the day before. He was like, "Dude, you're speaking on this fucked up panel, man. It could be all bad. It could be all like, bad, bro. This is a PR nightmare." <laughs> you know, I'm like, "Fuck." <laughs> I was gonna lay in bed awake anyway. Hilarious. So thank you. But um, yeah, it went it went great. But one of the things I was trying to focus on was like, look, we can talk about all the reasons we got here, but let's focus on how do we how do we archetype that how do we construct that archetype of mm -hmm. a model male american or not you sure, know? Sure. and so i think there are things that we can anytime and this is the same with with cold therapy but when you can put yourself in the face of danger and fear in a fucked up situation that's not fun and you can stay calm in the storm mm -hmm. that fucking extrapolates out to everything else yes, in life it has man. carryover to yeah. everything you do yes, yes, sure. and that's i mean in the cold you can't get in there and start fucking huffing and puffing Wim Hof breathing in the cold. Yeah, you can no. do that before and after, but not yeah. in the tank. You have to right. slow everything release. down yeah. yeah, and dip into parasympathetic. And so that translates back out. The body remembers. So the next time you get cut in traffic, if you take that deep, slow mm -hmm. breath, the mm -hmm. body remembers. It right. shifts back into parasympathetic. Mm -hmm. You're not in fight or flight anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I, I feel that from jujitsu. I feel that my, my baseline stress levels from work, from family life, from yeah. being a dad, all that shit gets dumbed down. It's quieted yep. mm -hmm. when I'm on the mats more is often. It, is it rare mm -hmm. to see like a hothead that does jiu-jitsu? I, you know, early on I knew I knew a guy that was kind of a hothead and a dick. Um, they're pretty rare. They don't yeah. last. They don't. They get either super hurt a lot or they just leave because their ego can't take it. Well, yeah, people, I was, well, people will stop rolling with them too. You know, like yeah, I, yeah, I would yeah. avoid that guy. I'd be like, ah, oh, you know, I'm going to sit this one out or I'm going to, I got this guy. He's going to keep pulling. And, and, yeah. yeah. And I would just, any, you know, those guys kind of want, you know, they hunt for the bigger dudes or guys that are fighters or whatever. So, I mean, there's targets wherever you go, but at the same time, it's like, I'll, I'll fucking pick guys ahead of time, you know, like my next two rounds and then the next two rounds mm -hmm. and just keep doing shit like that to avoid those people. But yeah, I don't, I think they, they, if they stick around long enough, they learn. Mm -hmm. If they don't stick around long enough, then they never learn, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. 
What do you think about the progression of? Because I, I haven't done jujitsu for it's been at least ten years, and it's like the fucking sport has changed so much since I stopped. Feels like training. it exploded. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's growing like crazy, and partially, I think it's podcasting. A lot of podcasters do jujitsu, and, and, and that new media is just spreading everything. Well, Oprah Winfrey has been fucking talking about no it. <laughs> Joe Rogan is Oprah. Oh, that's Oprah. Doctor Oz. Oprah's doing jujitsu. Fucking blue belt now. Yeah, yeah. She's, yeah. Her I mean, side I mean, badass. When the Oprah her side mount. Yeah. Her side mount. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. She lays on you. Uh, uh, yeah. Me on belly. Yeah, when, no. the, when the Oprah Winfrey of podcast fucking drops jujitsu and like yeah. you know talks about it nonstop. Yeah. But it's I mean. it's it's um it's evolved so much now where you're talking about leg locks and stuff like that. When I was training, it was you did them, but it was still frowned upon. And now you're seeing like leg locks are have taken on a whole new fucking game, man. It's really evolved, and I you know I got my black belt a couple years ago, and it was a different system with check mat, and I then. You know, I fucking love that system. Those are my guys. Like I'll always be a check mat black belt mm -hmm. and coming to Austin and working on it. They have a 10th planet studio there. So it's like, I'm not going to go find the check mat in town. Sure. I only train when I'm at work, which is a sweet mm -hmm. deal that Aubrey allows that to happen. Like while you're on the <laughs> you clock. You have a very you sweet deal. Like, <laughs> I can walk I, 20. And I know we talk about this every time we see you, but you have. It's like a cryo You have created the life for yourself. Yeah. I, you know, awesome. I know, I'm sure there's people that are listening because we did go right into psychedelic talk right away that like probably turned their minds off. Woo, But I'll tell you what, something about you. Uh, that you cannot deny is you have definitely created for yourself a very cool Kyle is a closer. <laughs> Looks like the secret was right the yeah. whole time, guys. The secret was <laughs> right. <laughs> Wish it there. into existence. Oh man! But uh, yeah, man, I walked twenty yards from my from my cubicle to the jujitsu mats. You know, which is the a, cubicle that you're never in because you're normally laying outside. And I'm the doing sun, fucking sun tai chi and shit. Yeah, I get <laughs> trolled all the time with the girls in the office. They're like, they're, like, they're like optimizing and I've got fucking little LED goggles on while I'm doing deep meditation, just literally laying on the floor on the fucking concrete under my desk. <laughs> I'll just fucking throw it on the on the That's on the awesome. IG. But uh, yeah, jujitsu has been great, you know, and, w and getting back to learning this new system, like it's at 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu is one of Eddie Bravo's schools. Yeah. And he's a fucking jujitsu wizard. He's yep. just a nerd. He geeks yep. out on it. And, he, and a lot of people give him shit for making a name for every single position and every single move. And it's, it's cool, though. It's I love cool it. to see like, hey, all right, I'm in truck position and there's fucking all these different finishes from here and all these different transitions from here. Bro, and so it's, it's learning. A, it's like learning a second language. Oh, I love it's it. It's learning so, how to speak again. It's so, um, I love all the innovators. I love it when people come in and when I, so 10, when I was training 10 years ago, I would go on YouTube and look up catch wrestling and looking up all the positions of catch, which now you see a lot of them. But back then I would, you know, throw a, a you know, a, a neck crank on someone and they'd be like, what the fuck was that? Where'd you get that? Like YouTube. Yeah, you know? <laughs> Matt Fry, you know, do whatever. Yeah, Eric Paulson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Josh Barnett. Lots mm -hmm. of good shit there. Mm -hmm. Dean Lister started with catch wrestling. Yes, too. yes. Dean Lister is actually the reason why leg locks have taken off. He he, he was the first dude to he fucking was one crush of the, people. One of the he is a leg lock master, but his time in New York at Henzo's and uh, Danaher's, Danaher's one of those nerds, and he would just take fucking notes religiously. I think I think at the time Danaher talked about this on Rogan's, but I think at the time. Lister was a purple belt and he was just so legit on the legs. Danner realized like there's a lot to this. Mm -hmm. And so all of his guys, like they're the leg locky now crew, you know, and they're that's Gary Tonin. And uh, I know you guys have had him on mm -hmm. um, Eddie Wolverine Cummins and Gordon Ryan, who's just fucking blown up on the scene. And they're all just really, that's the fucking lineage. And that's one of those cool things is like, Jiu-Jitsu is young enough where you can look back and say, like, who you got your black belt from, who they got theirs from, yep. who they got theirs from. Like, yep. you can watch the fucking family tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's pretty rad to see that system because it, as people develop different parts of the game, that accelerates until everyone rises up to that mm -hmm. level. And then a different part of the game comes People up. figure it out. So, like, mm -hmm. you'll see, like, a new move or position. This is what I love. And then you'll see, oh, shit, this guy's killing everybody with this whatever. And then before you know it everybody's figured it out and they, they move on to something else. You know, you yeah. guys had a huge presence this year at Paleo. I noticed that with just everything. You had the jiu-jitsu tournament going on outside right. and then you mm -hmm. guys had a booth. Yeah, is it, it, it? I noticed Bulletproof wasn't there this year and there was a couple other booths. Was it smaller this year though, overall? No, I think I think it's bigger this year okay. because remember last year they had the jiu-jitsu mats inside so the middle area where there's That's all right. the workout stuff. Oh, yeah. That was fucking huge last year. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And with the jiu-jitsu mats outside for the tournament, that whole workout area is smaller, 
and they still filled in way more vendors than they had last okay. year. But yeah, um, you know, Tate Fletcher didn't come back this year with Caveman Coffee. There was a few people that dropped out, but a lot of new people showed up. Mm -hmm. So why do you think people dropping out? Is anything, or is it just because I? I have some ideas, but uh, you know, I got to be politically correct. Got so it. I'm not oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it is growing. <laughs> what, what, are, what, are, what are people saying? <laughs> yeah, the other what people, people saying yeah, on the streets. <laughs> yeah, what are the uh, words on the street? Yeah. What's going on with the, the rats? Is. Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> what are the rats taking? <laughs> well, we were, j you know, we were. <laughs> It, it it to me I thought it seemed more organized so therefore I think people thought it was smaller so I think they they got they had they looked like they had more people on staff and I know that was a complaint we have buddies that didn't show up this year and stuff like that that will re remain nameless and I know that the the, the knock that they kind of had was oh it wasn't as you know they're just not as organized but I felt this year they had stepped up the organization I felt that it was bigger there was a bigger staff more people helping I was out. fucking completely taken care of. obviously my experience this year was worlds different from my experience last year. Oh, yeah. You know, I've, I've spoken about that a lot, how funny it was, you know, like walking around with you guys and Sal's like, hey, man, you got to you gotta meet my buddy Kyle. You know, everybody's like, oh, you guys are mind pump. <laughs> and they'd fucking give you like, instead of the sample bag, they give you like a giant box of whatever the fuck they sell. <laughs> and then like, do you guys sponsor podcasts? They're like, oh, yes, here's the CEO's fucking business card. <laughs> and uh, yes, we'd love to be on your show. God, that was just a year ago. I that know, was just a year trip. ago. You know, and then You're Sal introduces me and, yeah. uh, and they're like, Hey, my buddy's starting a podcast. They're like, oh, how many episodes do you have? And I was like, oh, I've recorded seven, but I haven't released one yet. <laughs> like, oh, you're starting a podcast. Yeah, yeah. I felt fucking infinitely and small. And now you're the big dick moments. walking around That's in that it, room. You know? Swing in that day. Right. Hey, how I'll fucking, over here. tell me how awesome that feeling is when you walk in and you're like, hey, remember me from last year, motherfucker? <laughs> 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 it wasn't like that, but it was no. cool. It was cool. You know, I like the schedule a lot. I thank Michelle Norris for that. All my talks were on Friday on the first day. What talks did you do? You did the, did you did the, the one on the, 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 the man. A panel, one. The Death of the American Male with John Durant. Did that go well, by the way? It, it, it really, cliff notes on it. It, it really did go well. Well, I mean, they looked into the Me Too movement, things like that, and, and really, like, is that empowering for women or is it disempowering? You know, Can we talk it, about that a little bit? Because I don't I, know a lot about it. I hear yeah, it all. And, I'll, and I'll have to be careful with my words here because, you know, ultimately it's, a, it's, a, it's not a huge win to <laughs> yeah. be correct in that, right? right. No. But I do have thoughts on it. And, and the truth is it, it's nice to – anytime we can raise awareness to things, sure. it's important. But at the same time, it can draw us into a culture of blame and us versus them. Right. And I, and I compare it to the political climate. What do we mm -hmm. see now? The right is extremely right. The left is extremely yeah. far left. And it's gonna, that gap has widened and widened. And over time, it will fucking collapse back in on itself. And we will have a true mm. centrist movement where people do see the positives of both sides. Like, you know, yeah. I want to fucking have control over my body. I think I should be able to do psychedelics. And maybe it's not a bad idea that I can own a gun. Right. Mm -hmm. Or whatever the fuck. Fill in the fucking blank. Just not at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at the same time. <laughs> not at the same time. So, I mean, but that's the thing. Like, we, we, can, we can actually see it. I mean, if we really pay attention and we're not triggered and drawn in to fight the fight mm -hmm. of us versus them or the blame game, then we then we can it opens up our field of vision. I, I think what's right? I think what's happening right now is actually extremely clear from my from my point of view. I think there definitely is a crisis of masculinity, but it's not what some people are saying. Where there's too much of it, or it's toxic. It's the opposite. So what is the definition well, that's, of the that's, me that's, too though? What's well, the that's that, the the issue here. We'll we'll jump into me too. But the issue of the issue of masculinity is why is it the death of the American male? Right. So and then you, you can get into that. What does real masculinity look like? Right. Well, I don't know that we should call it the death of the American male because sure. I can't look back on America and say we should have, like, what is it, fucking 1950s man that we're yeah. trying to emulate? Yeah. No, that's not cool you know what I'm saying? Or the yeah. slave owners <laughs> yeah, initially? Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. yeah, they're great thinkers. They own slaves. Sure. So, like, there's, there's, <laughs> oh, there's fucking, yeah. there's pros and cons to every fucking male that's ever yeah. been in America. If we take it back to tribal settings and things like that, I think there's a lot of benefit we can see there, even no, I, in I, even in matriarchies, not just yep. the patriarchy, right? But this comes from we've been in a patriarchy for so long, and we're seeing the ramifications of that. Mm. And yeah, maybe, right? Mm. And so there's an excellent book that I recommend people read. It's called Iron John by Robert Bly. Okay, and he breaks down the poem of Iron John. Yeah, but he'll he'll say the poetry and then he'll stop out of the poem to break down all the mythology and everything that he'll fucking put it in layman's terms I for see. people. 
people. Yeah, no, no. It's it, here's the thing: when they say the death of the American male, what they're what they're talking about is not how American men were in the 1950s or 40s or 30s. They're talking about the romanticized version of what the American man was. When you look at the old ads of the dude with the suit and the, he's got like he's alpha and he takes care of his family and he's really responsible and he's honest and. That's and he's what well heard. To. The kids listen to him. Yeah, that's right. what they're referring to, which is, yeah. you know, but, but I think what we're seeing now is definitely a crisis of masculinity in the sense that uh, at record levels, men are leaving their you know, women with their children. That alone is a major, like people don't realize how big of an impact that has on a society where children are being raised without fathers, where the dad's just fucking peace, I'm out of here. And, and they refuse. Here's what masculinity is. It's responsibility. Yeah. And you can say that about femininity too. But you have a lot of – because we don't have a biological clock. That's one of the reasons why we get away with this like I'm a 35-year-old fucking child and I'm partying every day and I don't really care about responsibility and who cares? I don't need to you know, worry about all those other things because I can just take care of myself. Women have a different uh, – they have a different pressure on them because they – you know, they have their biological clock. And so you see a lot of guys just not fucking taking responsibility and that's the crisis that I think we're talking well, about. Well, and that, that comes from not being heard. You know, so there, there's a thing where women want to have a voice. And is that where the Me, is that where the me Too means? should. No, Me Too is literally the, the, I was the rape shit that was, was going yeah, on. I yeah. was groped. I was fucking, it's, yeah. it's the sexual issues that were going on in Hollywood oh. largely. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Harvey Weinstein shit. So, and, and that movement does shed light. And there's a lot of men that came, Terry Crews fucking threw up hashtag Me yeah, Too yeah, from yeah, getting yeah. fucking hit on by a... Uh, his agent. He mm-hmm. said he was getting followed around in traffic and all sorts of weird shit. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it goes deep in Hollywood. But again, is that empowering to do that? I think it creates division. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, there's a lack of, if we don't take ownership over ourselves, it's disempowering. And that's not to say the, you know, they were asking for it or sure. they knew what they were doing. It's nothing to say with that. John Duran had a great point. He's like, look, Harvey Weinstein's a fucking scumbag. He had what's coming to him. You know, like there's no two ways about that. But if you're telling me that you're going to go to his house for dinner at night solo and not think anything else is on the table, that's, that's, that's just, I mean, what, sure. are you a child? Should yeah. we take all, abs- mm-hmm. you know, absolve you of all responsibility and action? That's what a child is, yeah. right? So you have to take some ownership of that. And he was like, at 930 at night, do you think it's an issue? At 1 a.m., do you think it's an issue? At 3 a.m.? And these are literally the times they were showing up at the house. Mm-hmm. So, like, you have to take some ownership of that. At least it's a possibility. Yeah. yeah. Right? And there's... there's Well, a lot of... It, what, what people need to realize, and it sucks because taking responsibility is so difficult, but yet it's actually not as difficult as being a victim. Being a victim is actually far more, di- more difficult to take in responsibility. And people need to understand... I'll give you a great... He's an easy example that nobody will disagree with. It's like when people complain about, like... Like, people will be like, oh, why are the Kardashians so famous? They're so dumb. Like, why are they fuck? Who cares? And it's like, uh, be, we're the ones yeah. buying their they stupid magazine it. covers and, and, and giving them money. And talking about them. Yeah. And talking about that's, them constantly. That's the responsibility that I'm talking about. It's like, we have the power. If we want to shut that down. If Weinstein, if they wanted to shut him down, they could have. People can. They could have done that. Right? And, and, and there were stop rumors. Stop watching his movies. Stop talking about him. Well, stop or, just, or just not giving him business. Like There were rumors have been going around for a long time about him. In fact, you right. can watch old videos where people would joke about it in interviews. Like, oh, make sure you don't go to Weinstein's house. And they'd all, ha, 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 ha. It's like everybody knew, but nobody wanted to stop it you know, or nobody right. wanted to stand up. And it's like we have the power. Yeah. We have the power to control these things a lot of times. Yeah. I think, I think there's... I don't know. I mean, you, and, and again, but it's a we, tough could, we could go to back. About. It is touchy. We could go back and forth on all the reasons and all the this and all the that. But I, ultimately, I tried to focus on what are the take homes? Like, how do we reconstruct that? And I think yeah. single sports is a big one, especially for young males with the whole everyone gets a fucking participation award and, oh, yeah. and everyone will get equal playing time. You know, my team do- sports are being destroyed right now. My daughter's playing basketball. She's eight years old. Oh, they don't keep that. they don't keep score. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Exactly. It's terrible. They don't keep score. Exactly. Dude. You, I'm know. sorry. Hold on a second. Let me correct myself. The adults don't keep score. Guess who keeps score? The kids. The kids know. Yeah. Kids, my daughter will come out and be like, "Give a fuck." They yes. do. They yeah. give a fuck. Yep. Rightfully so. Mm-hmm. You want to play to win, yeah. and that's why I think single sports will rise. Wrestling will rise. Jiu-jitsu will rise because they're incredibly important for 
fucking kids to go through that, to know what loss feels like, to how to deal with that, to learn. That, and that's one of the things Jordan Peterson talks about is like, are we creating this fucking safety bubble, this safe place for kids all the way through fucking college and university where when they make it out in the real world, they're not prepared yeah, real life for fucking right real the life. Yeah. They're not prepared yeah. for the workforce. They haven't had any adversity. They've had no, they're, it's, it's cutthroat, man. Yeah. It's sink or swim, you know? And so how do we prepare people for that? Yeah. You know, men and women, yeah. but especially young men. No, who, my, my favorite quote is, uh, you know, you don't want to make your kids safe. You want to make them strong. Mm -hmm. because, not because you don't want to make your kids safe, but because you can't completely make your kids safe unless you lock them in a box yeah, you can't control everything. which that's terrible you would never want to do that so you'd want to make them strong so they could deal with you know what happens in the real world like, like i'm not going to be able to com completely it, it would be impossible for me to never have my kids be introduced or around let's say hard drugs or stuff like that like let's say i'm a parent i'm like i never want my kids around drugs at some point they may be exposed to these things so i want to equip them with the confidence and the in themselves and to be able to make the right decision for themselves. That's the best thing you could possibly do. Not the like, let me cover you and protect you all the time. It's impossible. That'll never, what are you going to do with that? So or did you, uh, in the, either that talk or did you see any other talks? Was there ever any controversy or did any, was there any good heated debates that went on this weekend? No, know? no, not that I know of. And that talk went surprisingly well, you know, and then I had a solo talk on cognitive optimization, which was awesome. I thought they were going to have me, off in some fucking obscure room with like five people. I saw attending. the video of that. Yeah, it was dope, man. You were up on the stage. There was maybe five open seats. There were people standing watching. It was. It went really well. What'd you talk about? Cognitive optimization. Just, just different like things to do. Well, for what I wanted my, I guess the synopsis was how do how does everything affect the brain? You know, we usually mm -hmm. think like if I want to optimize cognitive function, I'll take a nootropic, I'll take coffee, those kind of things, but really tying together what posture and movement does for blood flow mm -hmm. to the brain and diving into diet, you know, like even if you're not going to go keto, understanding which carbohydrates are right for you, how that affects insulin response, everything from inflammation to the fucking the hitting the wall when you're in the afternoon, like everybody talks about brain fog or and fucking five hour energy has a commercial all about this shit. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's like, you can either take this shitty supplement or you can pay attention to the food that you put in your body, how much that impacts the brain cognitive function and mm -hmm. just cellular energy at the mitochondrial level. Right. So taking a deeper dive into that biohacks like, um, trans direct cranial stem to, um, how we can influence through brainwave entrainment, you know, with things now, like Now, did you prepare for like this that. with like slides and shit? Or? No, man. It's funny because the, the, the lady I came up after had like this beautiful presentation with slides and shit. And I, and I made a joke about it. You know, they just give you a little earpiece so you can walk around. And I was like, yeah. Uh, I was even going to have handouts with a lot of the science that supported it because yeah. thankfully we've got uh, Dr. Vince Kripke is a PhD at on it, And I just had him for the last month peeling through research to back up everything I was going to say. There's a lot of people look at, especially with you guys, you know, like you're a bro. Yeah. You yeah fucking yeah. have oh, a yeah. body. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, what <laughs> are you fucking going to tell me? You know? so I, I got up there. I was a little, yeah. A little yeah. self-deprecating. I'm like, I'm not a doctor. That was the first thing I said, you know, and That's people kind of chuckled and, uh, doctor you know, dove into that. but yeah, you know, I, I have a reason to learn this stuff. Having been punched in the face many times playing football since I was 10 you know, like I, I really wanted to take the deep dive into all the ways I could optimize my brain and help heal the brain because mm -hmm. I certainly have been put through the ringer. And now you, of all the things that you do uh, with your position and stuff, which ones make you the most? Because you're speaking in front of a crowd. Now, mm -hmm. you don't ever come across as somebody who's nervous, but uh, do you ever get nervous? Do you ever get anxious? Like what's the most difficult part of what you do? Well, I mean, I've spoken in front of large crowds many times, especially doing tours for the troops. We would do three or four different bases in a day sometimes. And I'd speak in front of pretty large crowds. Mm. And um, were you nervous back then? I mean, were there, was there ever a time that you were nervous? No, I've always felt like I had the gift of gab, like public speaking was never a fear of mine. And it always cracked me up how, I mean, like what I would feel, you know, like if you ever watch a comedian bomb on stage, yeah. mm -hmm. like those fucking mirror, mirror neurons start kicking oh in. My God. Like, fuck, like I feel get, sunk, uh, dude, yes. people want to heckle and I just feel terrible for them. And, uh, totally. and I feel that way when I see somebody get up and speak nervously, like you can see the panic or the fear and oh. it's like, oh, I got to <laughs> oh, fucking take yeah. a deep breath for them. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But I've, I've never had that issue. And oddly enough, I got nervous for the death of the American male because it, you know, Just Aubrey's the text the night before the topic matter. and yeah. the fact that it's equal parts, women and men, like, I didn't know the way they were going to take it. And surprisingly they had great takes that were, 
not pro male, but pro fucking human. Yeah, you know? yeah, and that, that was a beautiful thing. It made it easy. But what was cool. And I was telling John Durant that was, it was like, that was the hardest talk I had. And to get that over with first made everything else a fucking cakewalk. So when I went up solo, it was like, I could, I fucking know this shit. Mm -hmm. Let's crush it. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they, they're up there and they'll give you like the 10, you know, 10 fingers when you have 10 minutes left and they hold up a little sign for five and then one and then game over. And I wanted to, I wanted to split the talk to 50% Q and a, but I barely got through everything with no Q and a. So I just told everybody she was holding, like shaking the game over sign at me to get the fuck off stage. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just getting I'm into sorry. it. Yeah. I was like, I fucking didn't get to touch on microdosing. I didn't get to touch on this. Please see me over here. I'll make sure I answer everyone's questions. And so like fucking at least half the crowd stayed after to come up and shake my hand and meet me That's and right. get my business great, card. Man. It was dope, man. That's it was right. really cool. And then the final panel we had was on uh, biohacking, and that was with Ben Greenfield and yeah. two other guys that I hadn't met before that were just as fascinating because, you know, we're buddies with Ben, and I've followed him religiously. I've learned <clears throat> half the shit I know on biohacking from Ben. So it was really cool to get different perspectives from the other two guys that were biohackers in different ways, yeah. you know? Bro, what a, what a trip. You you were on a panel with Ben, who I know is somebody you followed for a long time before right. and looked up to. That must be Is yeah, that awesome. fucking weird or what? Yeah. Like? Mercola was supposed to be on that panel too, who's that another guy cool, that right? I've really fucking, oh, yeah. you know, really learned a lot from. What's been the biggest learning curve for you doing, during all this? Like, what's, what's been the most difficult of it? With with getting you know, with all of it yeah. to speak or just no being all on. of it like even, yeah. even working at Onyx even I, I, I wanted or... to get into Onyx with you guys it's kind of neat I, I I totally forgot it was just a year ago when we literally were coming down that was the beginning of your relationship with Aubrey and on it and going off with that so it's yeah now, you've now been cranking away at that position for quite some time I always see the Onyx podcast up in the top now I mean I know it must be performing well and so what has Onyx been like for you and what's What's in the future there? What's happened over the last year? Kind of recap that for us. Fuck, I think, you know, the hardest part was the transition because, you know, getting fired while I'm on the airplane, like literally in the airport to fly to on it for an interview, uh, getting fired with no severance. That was where it was like, fuck, man. So when I got to on it, um, it was hit the ground running, you know, and I'm, I was fucking using modafinil way too often. And uh, slamming a half a pot of coffee each day. And I was so jacked to the gills of trying to perform and prove my worth and and just work, 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 work that I wasn't taking any time for myself. Mm. You know, there was no working in, as as Paul Check puts it. And really finding that balance. I, it was when Aubrey sent me to Sedona with, with my wife mm. uh, where I really got to unplug because you go through a detox there and there's no caffeine and shit like that. And I had fucking pretty bad caffeine withdrawals. And, uh, but meditating there, I realized like, fuck, I have not, I would schedule meditation and shit like that on, on just, you know, even just caffeine, like too much caffeine and whatever that baseline is where you drop in a deep meditation in your inflow, I could never get there because my baseline had been so high, rose so fucking high. (laughs) Like how am I going to drop back down anywhere even close to that? That's a good point. Right. And that's why they say to meditate first thing in the morning or right before you go to bed because you're calmer. You're already in the parasympathetic, right? So I think that was a huge learning curve for me was realizing like I can still get, I can get more accomplished and better if I actually take time for myself to unplug. Yep. You know, you were probably operating a little bit out of fear. Like I got to prove, I got to prove a hundred percent. That's what I'm saying. You know, that's, it was a hundred percent fear based. And, um, that's, that's made work so much more enjoyable and so much more efficient and effective. And, and Aubrey, You've proven, you've proven your worth for sure. No doubt. You know, we've doubled in the, in less than a year. I think at the six month mark, we had doubled the downloads per episode Oh wow! for the on a podcast. Fuck yeah, dude. You know, yeah. Thanks yeah. to having guys like mind pump on. Uh, Boom. <laughs> you guys are number three uh, all okay. time. Of all, all time. Right. All time, man. Who are the two three? ahead of us? Number one is Aubrey from own the day. And that's a given. Oh you know, yeah. If everyone that's wants cheating. It's cheating. Yeah. But I, it's and, a, and I read, Come on, man. I read the book three times. So prior to interviewing him. So there's no doubt I was the best interviewer for Aubrey's on the day <laughs> launch. And uh, I think that, that, that really struck a chord with a lot of people, but you cool. know, so obviously, you know, if a podcast is good, people yeah. are going to tell their friends. We'll, we'll do it. another one. We sucked last time. We'll no, do, no, we'll do it. I'm coming yeah. back to the Bay uh, in May. I had too much alpha braid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro, yeah. We never yeah. told him. We, we got up so brain. high that we crashed. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm not even on alpha brain right now and I feel good. I'm going to run some when I get home, but yeah, when I come back in May, I want to interview you guys in the Mind Pump studio. Fuck yeah. And you guys can drop box me that shit. Hell yeah. That'd be yeah. Hell yeah. That'd be yeah. awesome. Who Fuck was yeah. the other one? So you had Aubrey. Who's number two? Mark Smelly Bell. 
Oh, 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 oh no, it. we're right. doing another one. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We'll let the CEO of Audit beat us, maybe. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, Bell was the first guy to crack forty thousand. He, he, yeah, okay. yeah, he's got a big following. But right, we'll, we'll get, we'll get there. Following, I mean, yeah. you guys will be at forty thousand by the time we record again. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the, Bell will probably be at fifty then. All right. So. <laughs> oh, I mean, but, little jab. He knows yeah, exactly how to get us to. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get you. I'll yeah, get that we'll, interview. We'll schedule that. But um, but yeah, you know, like uh. The podcast doubling in numbers, working in product development. I'm finally now seeing it takes so fucking long to have an idea of a supplement, to do the research, to, to fucking put all the ingredients together, to source it, to place the PO, to get the label done. Mm -hmm. It takes, and they're, thank, thank God there's a giant fucking team of experts that I work with in that. So I have a mind of, and I'm the office guinea pig, so I, I try shit out, and I'm probably the, <laughs> you know, out of all the people in product development outside of Aubrey, I train the hardest, you know, and I've, I've been a professional athlete, so really testing shit first as the guinea pig to see, like, does this work? Does it fucking impact dude, me you gotta, positively, negatively? That is such an important point, dude, because when you're, op when you're fit, when you're really fit and you eat well, that's when you can tell what's working, what's not. When you're not doing that shit, how do you fucking know, you know? Yeah, yeah it's hard to tell. So important. And you got to, I mean, we got to weed through a lot of bullshit. You know, there's a lot of bullshit in the supplement game. Yeah. It's no different when you're a supplement company making supplements. We go to, I just went to Supply Side East out in Secaucus, New Jersey with a couple guys from the from the uh, team, well, guy and a girl. And, um, you know, every, they see the fucking on it on your badge and it's like, I got this. You guys got to use it. You can put it in this product. Sure. I mean, fucking everyone and their mom comes up to you to say, use this thing. Try it's this. the next uh -huh. greatest thing, you know, and, and we're not a, we're not a performance company. We're not a longevity company. We're not a sports nutrition company. We're doing more of that with Exos now as a partner, but we want people to feel shit. You know, like that's the name of the game. It's not like, take my word for it. This is going to help you long term. Mm -hmm. Like, I want you to fucking feel different, mm -hmm. you know? So I think having those things start to fucking come to fruition and manifest, like literally, I know that's airy-fairy wording, but... Uh, Sounds like you have something in production that you're getting yeah, ready to I have rough. many Skirting fucking... around it a I little have bit. many babies in the womb that are about to be fucking birthed, <laughs> and I am so fucking pumped for it. And I wish I could talk about them, but that's a big no-no. Sure, sure. But you, so, you need people to test it for you, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, fucking yeah. throw you guys some shit. You yeah. will fucking love it, dude. All right, all right. You will love... You will love now, can I take it rendition. orally or do I have to keister it? You <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything seems to be keistering these days uh, uh, over there. Uh, you need a pea shooter and another person to app to, uh, do the applying. <laughs> so I'll, blow up, I'll blow it up. The can we talk about? Oh my God. Can we talk about our good friend Ben? Did you see him? He actually insta storied his whole fucking coffee, coffee enema. enema. Did you watch that? No, but did you see him fucking pre and post eating shit? No, what? what? Wait, 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 wait. Excuse me. Oh, that, you mean that no, rewind? I mean, he ate. He 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 didn't eat fecal matter. Okay. okay. Oh, Although I'm not, okay. I wouldn't be surprised. Right. If he would do well, something. yeah. I was yeah. gonna say I would. Oh, yeah, frozen, he did frozen, that. frozen poop capsule for the microbiome. I'm yeah. sure that's in his future. No, when you mean when he fell off his. Uh, so yeah, man. Oh, he, he, he was yeah, at yeah. he was at on a hanging. We were in the sauna, fucking off and just just catching up. And um, it's funny because he was like, "I need a bike. Do you know anybody in town?" And I was like, "Yeah, man. I'll, let me hit up Lance Armstrong. Name drop." <laughs> and uh, 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 so I hit up Lance and uh, a big name drop. and he was going to fucking get a bike from Lance's shop, uh, Mellow Johnny's out in Austin. And he ended up going with like this elliptigo. <laughs> that's what I was talking about. No, no, yeah. that just got I didn't done. even know that. So I, I, totally know. Got I was like, that's why he got hit because he was riding a stupid bike. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys know in the Bay Area, I mean, how many fucking tech dorks yeah, yeah. are on like this? Thank you. I yes. created this cool bike that nobody else has. <laughs> and yeah. you're like, this doesn't look as efficient as a bicycle. <laughs> it's exactly it what so I said. much harder. Yeah. It's a row bike. You look like that. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're going to die on that thing. Uh. So, sure enough, I mean, he grazed the a side mirror. I don't even think the car realized um, that he grazed it. But, I mean, he went face first in the fucking oh, ground. Man, yeah. This is the day before Paleo FX. Most of his talks are on Friday also. And uh, he hits me up and he shows. <laughs> and it's what's funny is my wife and I always laugh that he, he always has the Zoolander look. In all yeah. his photos, <laughs> yes. You know, he's got the patty lips. Yeah. And so... His face was fucked, blue man. Steel. He hurt his neck, and he's like, "Yeah, blue steel." But, he's, but he writes me, he's like, "Do you know any Kairos in town?" And I was like, "I know two. Let me, let me, let me check in with him." But he sends me screenshots or uh, selfies of his fucking face, and he <laughs> still <laughs> looks so goddamn handsome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, "Damn, dude, you ate shit, but fuck, you look good." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he was able to get adjusted, and, and uh, yeah, man, he it was a fucking tough deal. 
But that's funny. I mean, it's like, well, you did go with the elliptical. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first mistake. Yeah. Uh, so what happens if these supplements that you're in charge of kind of getting going, if they succeed and stuff, what happens with you? Does that does that do you does that elevate you or pay raises around the fucking clock? Exactly. Brother. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't think it's incremental like that. But at the same time, you know, yeah, if you you show a dollar amount that you're creating for the company. I mean, I think there's. You're gold, man. They yeah, fucking they, they struck some gold with you, bro. But well, with, it, without sharing your your personal finances and stuff like that, how how does your your pay structure work? You know, do you are you a salaried employee? Do you do make commission? Do you are you? I'm salary full time, no commission, and uh, you know, on it really does have probably the best benefits package in the world. And I have nothing to compare that to, but everyone we've talked to, like oh, they all, do all your even jobs. outside, even all, your jobs. all my jobs, <laughs> it's way better than the UFC's insurance. <laughs> Just having a 401k uh, is much better than the UFC's retirement plan. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Non-existent retirement plan. Um, but yeah, I mean, the 401k's guys were like, there, we work with many different companies and nobody has the structure you guys have, mm. you know? So it's, it's really cool. Well, they pay for education. They, they do pay all for all that. Shit. Yeah. We get, uh, 5,200 a year in continued education. Oh, wow. So it's wow. fucking sick, yeah. you know? And that covers, it's not just like, yeah, we'll pay that tuition and then you got to fly there and pay for your own hotel. Like that's all included, you know? Wow. Oh, that's cool. It's really cool. And there's so many things that go, to, I, I've, I've mentioned this before that probably piss some people off, but 50% off massages. They do copay massages, copay stretching, copay fucking body work that you can have done in the office on the clock. Yeah, that's dope. It's like, uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going like, to go to the massage room right. and fucking get a massage for 90 minutes on the clock. I'm not mad at half that. Half off. Yeah. It's you know, it's it's a fucking it's a beautiful fucking thing. So I mean, it's it's we're in a spot now where things have really taken off in different ways, you know, especially having a family wanting to be the provider. Mm -hmm. My wife's a stay at home mom. She's doing yoga teacher training and things like that. But even, even when she finishes her first 200 hours, she's not going to jump right into teaching full time. She mm -hmm. wants to have 500 hours before she really teaches consistently. Mm -hmm. So it's nice being the solo income earner mm -hmm. to know, like we're not just getting by mm -hmm. We're we're planting seeds for the future. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. You, you know, I want to ask you about your family because, you know, uh, I really appreciate when I'm around uh, families, you know, uh, and you can feel that they're just they've just a good energy with them. And you and your wife and with your son, you guys have such an incredible um, dynamic. I mean, it, I, you can really feel the, the love and you guys are very open and um, it's just awesome. Can you talk about like what's what, like what, what do you how, what's your approach with all that? How does that because you guys I mean, just a great dynamic. Yeah, I think, I mean, there's a couple of things that I think go into that. One, there's a willingness to change and grow together. And I think that's massive. It's something I didn't have in the last seven-year relationship I was in. We grew apart um, over time, you know, and that happens to a lot of people. But I know, like, this is this is somebody I can grow old with, you know, and because that that baseline criteria of I'm willing to do the work. And what I mean by that is, like, I've, I've done ayahuasca with my wife 12 times. We've dropped in with heroic doses of psilocybin many times. Our, our first experience together was psilocybin with my old coach, who's Native American. And I brought an ounce to a Tamez call, you know, a, a Native American sweat lodge. And it was going to be with three other fighters from the fight team and the two of us. And all three backed out while we're on the drive. So I get there and I, and I tell my coach, like, hey, you know, give us whatever you, you think is the right dose. And then the rest is yours as a thank you. And he was like, oh, thank you very much. He took fucking two caps out of the bag for himself and had to split the rest. Oh, shit. So you and my yeah. wife had never done anything. She had never even smoked weed. Oh, and wow. she's looking at this. She's like, this scene. And we had to chew them. They weren't ground or capsulated or anything like that. So she, we're just chewing relentlessly for like 30 minutes oh, my. through a bag of mushrooms. It was 13 and a half grams each holy shit and it's right before you go into a 45 minute sweat lodge oh and God. she's like is this a lot and i was like no <laughs> no i'm looking at it like fuck i've never done this but i also we oh i trust she's tiny coach. your wife is tiny yeah. she's 100 and 
10, 115 pounds. Yeah. 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 She's a small person. She's half, my, she's literally half my body weight. <laughs> so, but I mean, it, that, and that's, there's, there's courage in taking steps into the unknown. And also, I mean, I, I don't fucking recommend people take that high of a dose uh-huh. ever. We had incredible guidance. It was an incredibly safe space. Yeah. You know, we're on a native American reservation. But we you guys just about. seem like a team though. For, I, I mean, forget about all the things that those, you know, whatever your practices are. Cause I feel like those were experience. What I'm getting at is those experiences really helped us they shifted mm-hmm. us because shit's shit was rocky in the beginning you oh, know okay. i drank like a fucking piece of shit you know I, I wanted to be out of my mind and didn't realize it it wasn't like mm-hmm. i wasn't drinking because i was sad or upset or depressed or anything like that it was i just want to have a good time but i would always just fucking drink myself under the table mm-hmm. you know and i wasn't an angry drunk or anything like that but ultimately it was not healthy mm-hmm. you know and her trying to keep up with that was not healthy and I think being able to see things with new eyes, which mm-hmm. often those ceremonies do, has been a refresher for us, and it's helped us come closer together. Yeah. You know, but it is that willingness to work. It's the willingness to to be able to communicate better, to fucking talk and say the things that most people don't say to one another. That helps us grow. Yeah, you guys just seem like work, such a tight team, and you guys prioritize your son so much. Every time I see you guys all together, how how old is your boy now? He'll be three next month. Now, are you guys going to, is he going to go to, are you going to put him in school? Is he going to do homeschool? How does that? We've talked, my wife was homeschooled. We've talked about that. You know, going up to see Greenfield at his house, I I really expected his kids to be homeschooled because he was homeschooled K through Mm -hmm. 12, but he talked about (laughs) not being able to play well with others and a lot of the shortcomings of that and wanting that for his kids. Also, the fact that he travels so much, you know, he he thought it would be wise to put him in a private school. And then, you know, when they're done, that's when he's done. When the second they get home, he makes sure he's completely done with work, and that's when he teaches mm-hmm. them all the shit they don't learn in school: mm-hmm. how to forage for wild mushrooms. Oh, and, he's a great dad. And food, oh, yeah. how to a fucking great dad. How to bow hunt, all yeah, the cool shit, right? So, I think you can have that balance, and sim- that really struck a chord with me because we were considering homeschooling for a long time. I think I lean away from that now just because of the fact that I do travel a lot for work. I got a lot of shit going on and that's a lot to ask of it's her. It's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot to ask of her. Well, you know, the, you know? the, the old mentality, uh, what, wait, cause I, so I had two clients that were really into the homeschool uh, <clears throat> space or world and they did an excellent job with their son. When he was in third grade, you know, he had trouble in school and the, you know, the teacher's like, oh, he's got learning differences, this and that. You know, the public school system can be, you know, mm-hmm. we want to put him on this, we want to put him on that. So they decided to homeschool him, and they did an excellent job. And he, their son is definitely a very intelligent, eccentric kid, but also, I mean, also very well adjusted, very comfortable. And I don't think that would have happened had they kept him in the school system. But my point with the, with all this is, I would ask them these questions, and the way you homeschool is you could. There's so many. There's a million different ways. Some people are mm-hmm. like the parents do it all. But a lot of people just use tons of resources. So you just enroll your kid in all these different classes. And, and there's things. groups now. So yes. There's homeschooling groups. So like Tuesdays and Thursdays, you're at such and such house. So you get the social and, interaction. And yeah, too. And yeah, exactly. And it's with groups of kids. So they're yep. at least in, they're in a small, they're in like a fucking class of eight kids yep. with one teacher. Yep. You know, so they do get a lot more private teaching and close quarters. And there's still a social aspect to that. I've seen, <coughs> excuse me, I've seen homeschooling go really great where there's so much freedom in what you can do. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're going to go travel a lot, that's fucking amazing to have that ability to travel and learn on the road and still get your homework done yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. shit. And then also, you know, I've seen kids that were taking like morning jujitsu classes and things like that during the daytime that we, they would never be able to do no. if they were, you dude, know, in I've, regular school. I love it, dude. Did you, did you like school? I fucking hated school. I thought so. Mm-hmm. Now here's the deal. Now this is an interesting point because you hated school, but I would consider you a very intelligent person. You're, you have a very high aptitude for learning, and yet you fucking hated school. And that was Paul How Check. How shitty is that? Paul Check dropped right. out. Thank you, Doug. Paul Check dropped out in the ninth grade. Yeah, Bro. and he's, he's, yeah. he's one of the smartest same, things I've ever met. Same person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. And he's one of the smartest people I've ever met. I mean, what does that tell you? That's fucked up when you've got really intelligent Crazy, right? people who love to learn, who have a high aptitude. And they're put in a situation where they are convinced that they don't like to learn. I wonder, mm-hmm. did you go through a period where you're like, well, I just don't like to learn. I don't think this is... No, there was things that I gravitated towards, you know, and certainly in college, there was classes that I really fucking enjoyed. I loved philosophy, psychology, uh, sociology, like figuring out what made people tick. And it's funny because half the reason I quit my senior year and didn't go back is I was like, I'm never going to use this fucking degree for anything. 
I don't need this basket weaving degree. Like yeah. to stay eligible for football, I changed majors three times until it was a bachelor of interdisciplinary studies. So it's <laughs> two minors equal mean? one major. <laughs> and then most of the classes you take as a senior are on how to sell yourself on why your major is a legit <laughs> major. <laughs> there are actual BIS classes on how you're gonna fucking approach I love you know it, interviews and shit. Oh, in the job. And I'm like, that's really nice that you guys do that, but I know what this is. Yeah. <laughs> I know this is a shitty degree. Yeah. You know, and from Arizona State you know, nonetheless. So it's like <laughs> right. a, a shit school <laughs> with a shit degree, you know. And uh, but oddly enough, great party. I'm so. one of the few people. I was gonna say, it can't be that shit school. Uses, Playboy ranked it like number one. Uh, we were number one party school in the nation <laughs> twice while I was there. Not, yeah. not even in the top ten. Not now. trying to say you're the reason that they were the number one party school. But uh, I contributed. Yeah. Right. A I contributed bit. the cause. You know, I'm one of the few people that I know that actually uses everything I learned in college for what I do now. Like a communication. Sure. Was mm -hmm. the main focus in podcasting, learning what makes people tick, you know, things like that. It all circled back into that. Yeah. So irony, it, it's right? kind of, it's totally ironic. Bro, you're and on. I never would have known, like, oh, this is what I'm going to do later. Talk on, about your, ever. Take a, talk about your growth in that. Cause one of the things that I loved about you when we first met, which sometimes this is really, besides this is, your handsome face, you know, was I'm blushing. You were, you were very open. I remember when you first started your podcast. To hear uh, someone else criticize it or tell you what you, we thought, oh, maybe you should or shouldn't do this. And a lot of people are not open to that. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like you're very growth minded. And that's why you were open to that. What are some of the things that you have kind of grown and gotten better at? Have you gone back and kind of evaluated your own interview skills and the way you do stuff? Like, are you paying attention to I, that? Yeah, I used to do it. I used to do it more. And I've, I honestly have learned a lot from you guys, not to butter your nuts. But um, I remember. What, I remember what you were telling me. That expression. You were talking. You were talking to Connor about this. We and we were we were sitting on this couch. I don't think the interview was ever released. But um, I'm I'm sure it wasn't released. Okay. But but <laughs> Connor was feeling like he was getting ragdolled a little bit. But you, one of the points that you brought up was you have to hit the lowest common denominator. Excuse me. You have to speak in a way. Topo Chico will give me some fucking burps. Oh, yeah. So apologies no to the people listening right now. You have to be able to speak in a way that hits the masses. And if you get too airy fairy or out in the woods, that's going to fucking turn people off. And I know you guys do a great job of trying to fucking pad that mm. for certain listeners. Like, like, hey, Paul, uh, Paul check. <laughs> I know, you know, you're mentioning the term God. We'll probably have a lot of people turning off the podcast right now. So yeah. uh, at least save it, it for you know, 10 minutes. In. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm getting at? And, 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 and obviously you have to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something, you know, like it's just a lot communicating. Of, a lot, and a lot of people think, yeah, there's a way you can say it. And, and you talked about this with acupuncture, you know, like mm -hmm. oh, we're moving chi. Well, if you just tell me how it's affecting the fucking nervous system, mm -hmm. I'm buying into it. That's right. And if it's going to do that shit, I'll along the side and move my chi and unlock chakras and all that. That's great. But mm -hmm. don't sell me on that. You know, mm -hmm. know your audience, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, obviously taking over Total Human Optimization podcast, changing it to the Onnit podcast is a refresher, similar to the realness is a refresher for, for Connor. <laughs> uh, a little same, bit of same, same, right? Rebrand, same, guys. Same, 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 but different. Same, same, same but different. <laughs> um, you know, I think I bring a bit more to the table than the previous host and not to discount on w what he knew and what he brought to the table. And, but we do have, you know, on it is so big because of Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. So we do have a lot of fans from that, that want to call bullshit when they see it. And, you know, there, there's still, you know, some bro -y listeners that are just trying to, you know, like, sure. just trying to better themselves and, and they're not sh sure about stuff. So it's not everything fucking hits, but at the same time, I do want to expose people to meditation. I do want to give people the tools that have helped me the because most. Because it's fucking legit. It fucking works, man. Yeah. It yeah. really does. And it's your job. It's your job as a, as a podcaster, influencer, communicator, whatever the fuck you want to call yourself. It's your responsibility with your skills because you have skills, right? This is what you do and you're good at it. To be able to know what you know but then able to communicate it effectively enough so that the fucking bro on the other end who would never even consider it goes, oh shit, you know what? I think I'll give that a shot. And that's how you change people's lives. Yep. That's, that's how, really that's what it's all about. That's how it's got to be, brother. 100%. You know? And I mean, thinking, having people like Paul Chekhon, who's who will get out in the woods, but in a beautiful way. And mm -hmm. Anahata is a lady that I've worked mm -hmm. with who's definitely out there, but, but amazing. You know, like we mm -hmm. spent 45 minutes breaking down the Native American medicine wheel. 
you oh, know, wow. and just going through different Native American traditions and how we can apply that to our lives. Mm -hmm. And she can actually break it down in a language that's really accessible to people. Mm -hmm. But I think those kind of like, I want to fucking talk keto. I want to talk carbohydrate load. I want to talk training. You know, we've, we've got you guys on, we've got yeah. Mark Bell on, we've got different people in that space, but it's also important to expose people to things that are outside of their wheelhouse. Of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. that, that's what growth is all about. Challenge thought. Yeah. That's it. And you, really it's, you, you, you know, I, I learned this a long time ago and it's, I started assuming that because I had this realization years ago when this was for actually I got this realization when I started getting into economics and I started to examine how effective Milton Friedman. Yeah, exactly. I started to I started to see how effective uh, societies were when people were more free. And it, what did that tell me? Well, that told me that most people are pretty fucking good. Most people are good people. Most people just want to be left alone, to want to be loved, want to want to belong. They want to contribute. They want to have meaning. For the most part. so And that's true because if it wasn't true, by the way, free societies would crumble. You'd have to have crazy strict controls. But yet we walk outside today. I'm in Texas right now where you know, probably 30% of the population is probably carrying a you know, handgun. Or At and, least. Yeah, and nobody's killing themselves. Everybody's cool, super polite or whatever. Most people are, are, are good people. And so I started assuming that when I started communicating to people. And it made me way more effective. Instead of assuming like you're an idiot, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm about to teach you something. I started assuming like, okay, we're, we may have different opinions, but you're a good person. You're generally a good person just like I am. So knowing that, I'm going to communicate differently, and it was way more effective. And, and, and I got to – and not only that, but I learned, I learned how to listen better. That was a big one. That's been a massive one, you know, and not just from working out on it or, or podcasting or anything like that, but being a good listener is so important, especially in relationships. And that's, that's another key takeaway from my wife and I is the ability to listen to one another. Mm -hmm. just to keep your mouth shut, mm -hmm. you know, to let people finish what they're saying and to, to, to give people a safe, a safe space, a safe bubble, <laughs> give, give them the fucking opportunity to get what they have inside out. You know, so many times we're waiting to jump in or waiting to say the next thing and we don't allow that to happen. And that's where conversations fail, mm -hmm. you know, and you can tell like when you're talking with people and it doesn't even have to be you know, somebody you'll never see again or the single serving friends like they talk yeah, about yeah, on yeah. fucking Fight Club. Yeah. Like you're sitting on an airplane. Like it doesn't have to be that kind of conversation, but there's plenty of times where you're in conversation with people, especially at events like this, and you realize like this motherfucker's not listening to me. He's just trying to fucking jump in whenever he can or, you know, he's it, like you can tell. Mm -hmm. And I think when you talk to somebody who actually is listening to you, especially as a podcaster where you we have real conversations like this often, it's very meaningful. Like you feel heard and there's a connection that's made there. Mm -hmm. That's anything, fucking massive. Anything that you still see yourself right now that like that constant reminds you of a struggle or something that you're getting better at within the podcast, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like as far as habits that you have, like I have a really bad habit of like uh, rambling. I'll, I'll answer a question and then I'll just keep going on and on and on about something like that. And so, or I'll talk really fast. And so I'm trying to be cognizant of that and, slow down my speech and pause between things do you do you have habits that you see yourself and you're trying to improve on yeah there are times you know usually i try to evaluate right after the podcast because it's not often <clears throat> that i'll get to listen to the podcast and i know that was a great tip you guys gave me was to re-listen to the podcast that you launch mm -hmm. and even before it comes out and critique yourself mm -hmm. you know give yourself an honest look <clears throat> and i did that a lot early on and that really helped me get better. Now I don't have, really have the time for that. If I'm sure. listening to podcasts, I'm listening to you guys, Rogans, yeah. and God knows who else to try to gather more information for the podcast, yes, yes. right? I want outside influences. Yeah. But I think in that, there's still self-evaluation. And what I find that I'm really working on is the balance of knowing when to speak and how long to speak. Mm -hmm. Because it's not the Kyle Kingsbury show, it's the Onnit podcast. But at the same time, there needs to be that flow. Right. And people are tuning in to hear me just as much as the fucking guest, right? right. Like people it's are like tuning in to listen to fucking you guys. It is a dance, yeah. right? You know, yeah, it you, really is. You have to pay attention to how things are moving and like where to contribute and you know to keep it going instead of just like abruptly changing <laughs> topics. And you know, some people haven't really understood that process yet. Yeah, and 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 it goes both ways. You know, I feel like I do a better. I've I've been complimented many times on me allowing the speaker to speak. You know, like not having to fucking just chime in whenever With I feel your it's opinion, appropriate. Yeah, yeah. like uh, really giving them a floor to say their wealth of knowledge and speak. There are times where you get people that will just fucking keep going. 
and going, <laughs> yeah. and going. And if I can't jump in to help facilitate the steering and the direction I want it to go, like, you know, I'm going to get to this question. I, let, let me ask, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. There has to be times where it's give and take and, mm-hmm. and certain guests are better than others, as you guys know. So mm-hmm. I think, but that's all fine tuning. And it gets better every time you do it. Do you ever you ever struggle not challenging people when you when you feel like you know you should inside and you want to be respectful because they're your guests? Mm-hmm. I do this sometimes. That I feel took like, us a while to fucking learn. Yeah, yeah. like I, I, yeah. You're, you're in my house the first time I'm interviewing you. I, you're a just big name you. like that. Like yeah. you say some shit that I just uh, I want to challenge it or, or or whatever, right? Or I disagree somehow, but then I just kind of let it go by because I'm like, well, yeah, I don't want to I don't want to be that. Dick. Right yeah, now. I usually I usually don't try to. Prove people wrong, or, or it's, I mean, I'll take a, one for example. It hasn't even aired yet. Um, guy was talking about the endocannabinoid system and beautifully, and uh, he was talking about CB1 receptors and how everywhere it goes through the body, from the brain all the way down through the spine and out through nervous system, the periphery, right? yeah, yeah in, in the nervous system. And I was like, yeah, it's incredible, man. THC fits right in there. And he was like, no, THC fits in uh, a different receptor. And I was like, oh. You know, and then he caught himself. I was like, really? Really? Like, dude knows everything. You fucking damn sure better know where THC fits in. And and then he was like, oh, uh, I, I think I misheard you. You know, and it was cool, though, because I allowed him yeah. by not jumping on his ass yeah. and putting him he in defense mode. Himself. He was, yeah, he yeah. was able to backtrack and be like, oh, That's yeah, good. I think I misheard you and, and kind of right the ship there. <laughs> I was like, uh, we like, used to, ah, we used to have, really? we used to have trouble doing that. Not, not as much anymore. Now we'll, we'll start to call people out because uh, who was it that uh, uh, Jordan uh, Harbinger um, from the Jordan Harbinger show? He used to be on um, uh, Art of Charm. Yeah, Art of Charm. fuck yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Who's a he's. I think he's probably the best podcaster I've ever lo- like he's podcasted very polished. with. Yeah. Oh, he's just a, he's just he's, an, he's a he's a black belt. At the yeah, arts. exactly. Yeah. And he goes, "You're recording the show for your audience. You're not recording it for your for necessarily for your guests. So when you're having a conversation, remember that like it's for your audience. So if you want to challenge him, do it. Worst case scenario, the guy gets pissed off and leaves, and and then you have a good episode anyway. And I thought of that. I'm like, oh shit, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Plus, that's how I talk anyway. The, I, I, what I've noticed is the longer we podcast, the more the podcast has now become how I talk uh-huh. in real life, which is the way – and I and I'm like that anyway in real life. If someone says something that I disagree with, I tend to speak up. So we just do that on a podcast now anyway. When we when we interviewed, I want to make you dance a little bit. All right, mm-hmm. when let's we, dance. Because <coughs> like, I know it won't be easy for you to dance. I was listening to fucking David Bowie. Let's dance on the right here. Let's <laughs> dance. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Son. Let's dance uh, on your so red when, shoes. When we were when we were <laughs> interviewing uh, Aubrey last time, uh, I was asking him some questions that I thought were a little challenging and hard for him as far as being the CEO and where he where he sees himself in the future. And I got the feeling that you know he's really wanting to go down this like uh, the, becoming an author and he's I mean, obviously the book launched is done incredible I new york times bestseller yeah he's killing it evergreen forever that's on his fucking book new york times bestseller right. wow. i mean so he is he's fucking killing it exactly which what he, and it, it sounded like uh by the questions i was asking him that there's a good chance that he may move on into this just full-time author. go more into being an author yeah, yeah and it, that seems to be more of his passion than being a ceo of a big fitness health company or whatever you know so what do, what do you do you know what he's, his plans are can you speculate yeah on- yeah his i mean i think he mentioned this on the on the episode you guys did because i sat in on that for the only thing the last hour of it um the goal is to sell the supplement side at some point and oh. to the right guys, right? Mm-hmm. And just that side just of it. Just the side of it. Oh. He wants to continue to have the gyms and roll those out along with the cafes, and those will likely be separate. Um, cafes? Yeah, the on a cafe. Yeah, so you'll be able keto. to go in and get oh, optimized oh, oh, coffee oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, get yeah, the yeah. fucking keto Which shakes I love. and all that good That's shit. That's one of my favorite yeah. parts yeah, about We can roll those out anywhere, like Santa Monica, yeah, Venice, those are New York. Th- those are actually pretty fucking gangster. We love those. Actually, the, 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 the main reason why we come to the Onnit gym is for that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just, I'm not going to that cafe. Yeah. 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 Besides you, who say hi to have some of this cold coffee stuff. Bone broth juice. Yeah, so I mean, he's he's open about that, and obviously he wants to write several books. He has plans for, I think, at least three more right now and he i think he he just came to the conclusion the next book he's going to write will be on um psychedelics and drugs oh, okay 
I told him we have to. There's a lot of research. There's <laughs> 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 a, a lot of field, a lot of field fucking, research. Balls <laughs> deep with the n equals one. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta dive First deep. hand experience. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. But um, you know, and that'll be told similarly to own the day, where you know he own the day he had. This is how you do it right, and this is fucking up, and he was very self deprecating and and just, mm. you know, opened up about being a fucking human like where he had gone wrong and i think that'll be incredibly important in a book about psychedelics and drugs to be able to say like this is how you do it wrong this is what this looks like mm-hmm. yeah you know so i mean there there's a right way and a wrong way to do anything but that in particular can be one where mm-hmm. you could fucking die mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. what about you like what are you looking at moving ahead are you looking at just going to keep growing this i want to be the and- boss yeah no <laughs> no i mean i i know you guys joked about that i think Aubrey wanted a guy. I mean, he told me this on the fucking flight when I was leaving Paleo FX last year, which is how I have the job. We shared the same flight back to Vegas and he was, you know, we really got to dive deep. John Wolf was on that flight. We sat next to each other and went deep. We talked about everything, right. fucking fasting, psychedelics, uh, training, diet, nutrition, all that. And he said, I have a job for you. And, and uh, one of the ways that he broke that down was, you know, when he's gone riding, there's nobody else that on it that really understands all the moving parts the way he does. And obviously, I, I, can, I can bridge that gap for him. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think he'll have much more comfort in writing his next books, not only because of the New York Times bestseller shit. Like now, he'll get published no matter what. Sure. And he'll get a much bigger advance every time. And we'll spend a good amount of that advance on research for this next book. Yeah, but, yeah. but the point is, like, <laughs> he, he's not going to be in the office all the time. And that's what's cool is that I think he can, he can let go of the reins a little bit and see positive outcomes from that. Do you see, uh, like, a, um, are you guys adding positions, like, to the... All fi- the fucking time. Are dude. you? Wow. Yeah, we just got the building next door to us. All of creative's going to go in there. Oh, wow. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the creative room, but, I mean, there's... it's con- People are constantly getting reshuffled and moved around, and whole departments are expanding. We have eight new hires, you know, fucking yeah. every month. Wow. How does uh, uh, Exos fit into all this? Exos is our sister now. They are fucking, we're, we do all their supplements for them. We have a partnership and I think it's for the next five years. It'll probably continue on after that. Mark Verstegen and, um, and Aubrey are very close. And so it's cool. Like we, there's, Exos has, I think over 400 facilities. They're going to have one right across the street from us where mm. we can, it'll be walking distance and that'll oh, have, nice. a, it's basically going to be like a sports performance lab. Mm-hmm. They'll have a, a 12 person cold pool, just oh, all the cool sick. shit right. that they wouldn't spend at on it. They'll spend there because it's all pro athletes and, mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, high level military personnel that yeah. are going to run through there. So it's really cool that we get to dive into that and just right out of the gate. It's like, all right, we, you know, we, we make your supplements now. So we need a sports performance line. So creatine monohydrate, L-glutamine and electrolyte drink, mm. very bottom, bottom rung, you know, low hanging yeah. fruit for them. But we're developing a lot of cool shit for them as well that, that I think will, that's a great partnership. Yeah, and yeah. we get to sell that for on the sure. honest side too, so it's not like it's just for them. You know, it's for the for the world. But that's that's helped kind of steer us in product development towards new things, and I think that's that's fucking fantastic. Yeah, how, yeah. how long till the facility is supposed cool. to be built? You know, I think it'll be done in the next year. Oh, cool. Yeah, they already have the location. Are so. we going to be able to come check it out and hang out? Fuck yeah, man. Oh, yeah, man. you guys will have access. Oh, you guys are VIPs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> VIPs. Oh, like, oh, yeah. More of that ball buttering going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Slather it on, I'm going to like it. Let's keep it going. Yeah. For a we <laughs> actually felt it was pretty neat. Butterman biscuits. This, uh, this paleo was really fun for us because I, I really did feel that way when we came in. It was, I mean, every booth and every uh, check-in that we went to, um, I felt like you, either you were a listener or you knew, knew of the show and stuff like that and i've just one of again i don't know if it's fucking austin i don't know if it's the people we're hanging out with but just such a so welcoming and we just we they couldn't find our names we weren't because i think mike made a call last minute because we weren't even sure we can go to paleo and they had this thing where they changed the the vip passes something with the software and shit so we couldn't be found anywhere and i never felt like they were being dicks or trying to keep us out. They were like really working to like make it work for us to let us in and like just, mind who? Yeah. <laughs> <They're on the laughs> list. Uh, they, were, they were really cool. There's a guy doing animal flow on the lawn. Why don't you hang with him for a while while we look into it? <laughs> you know Kyle, you know Kyle Kingsbury? Yeah. He's the one letting us in. Come on. Yeah. 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 Kyle, oh, where is oh, we're on at VIPs, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Here's yeah. your pass. Yeah, here's your <laughs> no, it was a, it was a uh, we we sensed a shift in in uh, in our audience and we've met some incredible fans at the at this uh, this the convention 
it's a very humbling. I feel a, a tremendous responsibility. Do you feel a responsibility when you do your podcast? Like, okay, I need to make sure I'm I'm do, I'm saying doing the right things to help these people and give them the right information. Yeah, and to constantly give. And I think one of the, I mean, it's 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 kind of a half joke to say I'm the office guinea pig, but the truth is I'm always trying. I'm always searching. I'm always, and that's one of the ways we learn is through experience. Yeah. And so it's very easy because I'm on the front lines consistently playing with my body, you know, with cold and different things, whatever the fucking case is. And then sharing that with the world, Mm -hmm. right? I can't keep that to myself. I have to give that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the beauty is, is because I I truly still am hungry to fucking learn. I'm hungry and thirsty for the knowledge. And as I soak that up, it's very easy to share because it's fucking fresh in my mind. Mm -hmm. And then, man, this book was amazing. I'm going to get this guy on now, you know, and, 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 that kind of shit just flows together. We just had Max Lugavere from Genius Foods. Dude, love I Max. fucking love him. He, he loved you guys. Oh, dude. Like, oh, you know the Mind Pump crew? I was like, yeah, man. And he was like, dude, they're fucking great. He's our new bestie. Dude, yeah. he was awesome. Oh, he's great. You can he's, he's polished. He's a guy. He's, he's very he's, polished. Dude, he's a guy who reminds me of Dr. Rhonda Patrick. Mm. Like, he, you'll bring up a topic, and it's just they're lobbing a softball, and he's hitting it out of the park each fucking time. Oh, yeah. yeah. But he can quote the science, the exact numbers. Mm-hmm. You know, like, he's also just a good fucking person. Great. He's dude. a very good person. He's comfortable in his skin. We went and played a, a top golf with him, and we're all swinging, and, you know, we all, we're all, you know, terrible swings. Mine is absolutely horrendous. He goes up there, and he's super stiff with it, and we're all laughing. Oh, no, you could tell up. when he grabbed the club. That well, this that guy has not time. touched a a bat, a golf club, a, <laughs> a ball, a stick. I mean, he's I, never played a ball sport. Yes, 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 yes you yes, could yes, see yes. that it was as foreign as it could possibly yeah. be. And yeah. I mean, but it, so he sees us and we're laughing, and then he realizes we're laughing at ourselves and everything, and he's like, "Fuck yeah, man!" And he's just super comfortable, and I, we love the guy. Well, he's just like one the of our fact that people. just the fact that he did that. I mean, we're 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 becoming really good friends, but I mean, we really only hung out a couple times before just the other day when we hung out at Top Golf and you know he showed up we're already been drinking for a while we've been hitting the balls making fun of each other making memes of each other and shit like just fucking around <laughs> having a good time and he comes rolling in and right away Sal's like hey take a swing at it and he just like you can see there's just this cool, no, just a uh, second yeah oh, what happened what oh I was gonna say there's like no hesitation oh yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. he grabbed the club and then he walked over and and he, I knew it just the way he was getting ready. Like you could just tell this fucker has never swung at a golf ball before, and he did, and it was awful. I and felt my kinship with him oh, right away. And, totally. we saw that. <laughs> and we instantly <laughs> just started dying totally. laughing. And you know, he turned around and looked at us afterwards, and I, I got this feeling for just a split second that he was kind of trying to figure out like, are these motherfuckers like making fun of me are right now? Punking me? Or are we yeah. just all having fun together? And so I kind of called him over so he could see the Insta story that Taylor was already filming, making fun of all of us. Mm-hmm. And then he realized that we all sucked and we we're all just having fun and laughing at each other and he's like fuck you guys are fucking so cool that you can yeah. just he's a nice guy make man. fun like of him. yourself like that and be like this. yeah dude there's not a lot of people like that and i i connect a lot with people that that have this ability to be so comfortable in their own skin dude and he's definitely one. and he's like you said brilliant he's like, fucking dialed yeah. in yeah he, he'll have a normal conversation with you you won't even know he's that smart but then you start asking him some really deep shit he'll take you anywhere you want to go man mm-hmm. and so i really like that man my really favorite part guy. of this job for sure yeah. Meeting people like him and meeting people like you. Kyle. Yeah, 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 okay. man. Fucking awesome. If always, we, always, always love having if, you. On. If someone were to uh, drop into the podcast and listen to one podcast episode in the last 60 to 90 days, which one would you tell them to listen to? Fuck. That's kind of hard. Don't, <laughs> on the nothing. spot, brother. <laughs> Don't say the boss. That one's not fair. Mm. Yeah, that, well, that's the, that yeah, is the most downloaded too. one. <laughs> 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 I, think, I think from a practical. I will say the boss first just because it's the only – and that happened from watching the YouTube video you sent me of Jordan Peterson right before oh. 12 Rules. The YouTube video was the coolest thing I've ever seen for book promotion. He gave a little t- a little taster from each chapter yeah. in the book, right? And I was like, that's such a fucking brilliant way of course. to market it. And the people, people always just say – Rogan talks about this. With like Hollywood producers and shit, like no, don't tweet about it. Don't give them too much because then they won't watch. Like no, give them fucking everything. That's well, what's we li- hook we them live in, in a different right? area, in the area yeah. now. Yeah, it's like why do you show a fucking trailer for a movie? Yeah. You want to fucking you catch people, it. right? Yeah. yeah, and so that's what I, I took that model for when I interviewed oh, Aubrey. Very we cool. went through every what single smart, chapter what? in the book, and I had read it three times, so I knew the material inside and out. And uh, you know, he was obviously not able to do that on any of the show that he went to do to promote the book because they hadn't read it. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, out yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. You know, and even if they got an advanced copy, they didn't read it like I did, uh-huh. you yeah. know? So that's smart. That was, it was, a, it, 
for for absolute practical shit that people can take and and extrapolate and mm-hmm. use to change their life positively there's no doubt that's the one i think for um that's okay you can use that one because that does sound like you yeah no that was, sounds like you, you did your homework on that one sounds like sure. you crushed it too yeah. you know what i'm saying not just aubrey's yeah like you no it was it. it was excellent and that was that was back and forth and obviously you know he's a close friend like he's very close friend i mean so i really feel like there's an instant flow there yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. hard for us to have a fucking conversation. That's right. That's yeah. right. I do it all the time. Because I really, I do feel, I feel like we make, I mean, sure, we have all these guests that we all have on our shows and stuff like that, but I really think it's us who make or break the the interviews, man. Because I could have the most plain Jane person that nobody knows and it'd be a compelling fucking interview because the flow is there. Yeah, or if we're off. It's yeah, off. right. Or I could have somebody who everybody's so excited to listen to, but we're just choppy and they just didn't flow and just we weren't having a great conversation. We've had several like that where, you would have thought they would be awesome, but they weren't. But I think it's a lot on us to do our homework. And that's something I, I continue, I think, to try and involve my interview skills is to really know my guests inside and out so I know all the great questions to ask them that maybe. That's been, I think, one of the harder parts is is I don't, n- now I don't necessarily have the time to really dive into people. Like I got halfway through Genius Foods and I'll finish the book because it's that good before Max. Obviously, having read over half of his book gave me fucking more than enough material to work with him on. And I knew that material prior, but, um, yeah, with every, it's not like I can read everyone's book. We, I interviewed this guy, Casper. That's, it's not out yet. Uh, vendor student or something like that. He's Wim Hof's number one trainer. Okay. And he's from the Netherlands and just fucking biohacker, brilliant guy. And he gave me a book called Mind Lift, and it's an incredible book that I want to dive into. We talked about his his book on the podcast, but I didn't read a fucking single page of it because I have twenty books on my desk. Right, right. You know, so I can't. I don't get to put in the work that I want to necessarily for each one. But what's cool is like finding that way to navigate the space and knowing the material enough of whatever the case is where we can really have a great conversation. Mm-hmm. And it's not always that way, right. you know. But but it is nice. To so have that's that the episode spot. you think people should tune into. Awesome. <laughs> oh, cool, Casper. No, I, no, I, I mean, that I, one. I'm talking yeah. about uh, the Aubrey. one with Aubrey. Yeah, 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 man, Aubrey for sure. Own the day with Aubrey Marcus. Excellent, for sure. brother. That's the Very one. Cool. Well, fucking always a pleasure having you on the show, man. Yep. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Always a pleasure. Yep. Absolutely. Pleasure. Thanks for your hospitality every time we come out here, and of course, you know, we'll, we'll always return the favor when you're back up in San Jose. Yep. Okay, Thank. brother. So go to your podcast, uh, excuse me, your uh, app store, and get the Mind Pump Media app, so you can search for topics among our 750 plus episodes. Any topic you want to look up. Just type it in the search function. It'll pull up all the episodes with all the times we've talked about that topic. It's a free app, Mind Pump Media. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.